Hello there guys and gals, the Welsh Hunter here back with yet another 100% achievement and trophy guide and this time we are getting it all in Agent A Puzzle in Disguise. And this was developed and published by Yak & Co. It is usually available for £12.49 slash $14.99 but you can find this on sale frequently and it does go as low as like £1 slash one buckaroony, uh, something like that, so more than you think. So we play as the mysterious Agent A, whose face we never see. Presume it's probably Will Smith again, who needs money after the whole Jada Smith hates him but loves him, Chris Rock slap ting. Uh, anyway, we basically have to rummage around at Ruby LaRouge's house and secret stuff. What a high-class porn name that is, by the way. Hm, I wonder. Anyway, uh, moving on, she's a top spy and we have to basically be Agent A for Austin Powers to stop her. Now, as for achievements, now a lot, uh, again, are for straightforward story stuff. There are some miscellaneous ones to watch out for, plus having to talk to a mouse a few times, a crazy seagull a few times, find six spider webs, and complete the game in less than two hours. Now, it can theoretically be done in one playthrough, but uh, for the first one, for the miscellaneous achievements, there's a lot of running back and forth, so you could pause, watch me, do the same, and maybe do it that way, or do a second playthrough, which is easily recommended. Also, as we begin here, make sure to have your phone at the ready and a notepad or something, as some of the puzzles have random numbers that we need to write down, so get them at the ready. Um, again, some of the numbers will be different um, on yours than it is to mine. All in all, if you're doing two playthroughs, this is a three and a half hour uh, finish. Of course, if you can do it in one playthrough, it's less than two hours. So, with that being said then, finally, let's do it. And the first thing we'll do is just um, click, so left stick to Click, of course, the A button to interact with things. So what we're going to do is interact with the plant bot here by the door. And now what you'll see is you can't actually pick it up. What you'll do is press the A button on a certain point, And as you can see, you'll zoom in. And then you can pick up said item. So you press the B button to back out. Then you go over to the left here. And then what you need to do is you can drag things from your inventory. So with the A button, drag it over to whatever it needs to be. And then it'll click, click it in again, and that will get this, um, that'll get the panel up. So you need to click the top right button first, then the middle left, then the bottom right, and then the left right, and that'll go zzz, doors in, boys. And with this, you will get the first achievement called Infiltrator. Now, the first couple of achievements I actually unlocked off screen, that's why you won't see them pop on. So you'll get the first achievement anyway. Right, have a look at the table, zoom in. Interact with the top of the vase a couple of times here, and you can interact with the red button. Next up, you want to take the crank handle from the top shelf. There it is. And now you need to zoom in on the six buttons near the bottom here twice. And then, so all you got to do on this one, then you basically just got to click up, uh, click on all the blue buttons. Then the red buttons, then the blue, then the red, then the blue, then the red, until absolutely zero are lit up no more. So that gets that slight puzzle done first. Um, so what we'll do, press the B button to back out a couple of times and we're gonna go up to the living room right in front of us to get the target acquired. This is the star of the old P-Hub, Le Ruby La Rouge, definitely. Right, so we're gonna go up the stairs here, just by the fireplace. Now, in the foreground here is a lamp, so we're gonna interact with that to give it a good boosh off. Now, on the shelf, on the second shelf of the bookshelf, you need to interact with it, and we need to interact with it twice, so we can go ahead and take the magnet. So you can see the magnet there, interact with the red book, Take L magnet, and then we're going to back out, and we will interact with the piano twice now. There it is. Uh, we're going to get a miserable achievement here called a glissando glide. So all you got to do then is literally from the key, you can see where the key is marked. So you just need to press the A button and go up and down a couple of times. Because that's the noise the piano makes, of course. And you will get the glissando glide achievement. Right, so now we're going to back out four times until we get to the uh, main area with the fish tank. So not the living room, but this area right here. See the fish tank on the left with a couple of sharks in it? Nice house, by the way. Ruby, the P-Hub must be paying you well. Or O-Fans. 
So interact with it and now you're going to drag the magnet to the key and you're just going to go and, well, just get it out the pipe onto the other side. It's very easy, there's only one path to go, but you just got to be slow so the key doesn't fall all the way to the bottom and you get annoyed with it. Easy squeezy lemon von cheesy, as the saying always goes. Apparently, man, imagine having, imagine being so rich you could just afford sharks just chilling out. Anyway, open up the box or open up the, the filter, whatever it is, grab the key, job done. So now we are going to back out twice and then we're going to interact with the stairs on the right. We're going to drag the metal key that we've got and we're going to open up the door. And here we are in the upstairs. Right, you see the axe head? We're going to interact with the table just underneath that one. We're going to open up the drawer and take the yellow wedge piece. Sadly, it's not food wedge, it's just normal wedge. My fat ass always thinks it's food. So we're going to back out the door and enter the one on the right. So you need to interact with it twice there. To go into the bathroom, we're going to interact with the sink twice. And then we're going to interact with it again to turn it on. And then we can back out just the once. Interact with the mirror just above the sink. There we go. And now we can just click uh, click once more in in order to zoom to zoom in on the shelf just behind in the middle there on the bottom middle. You can obviously see a nice yellow veg piece. Uh, on the left hand side, you can interact with the pink pink bottle. Just a nipple out the way. Oh shit out the way. Then interact with the switch and get a little scene going. Oh my god! So interact with the telescope. Right on the bottom. Oh my god, it's all... It's insane! Huh. I see you've found my safe room, Agent. Though you're still no closer to finding me. <laughs> By the way, in case you were wondering, yes, Ruby goes <laughs> like a crappy Jim Carrey quite a lot um, with every cutscene. So then, once we are back, the room's been changed, so now we can go backwards. We can go into the left side room. And now what we need to do is interact with the clock once, and then we need to hold the A button until the time reads 3 McGlockin, or 3 o'clockin. Bong. Dinner's ready. Come and get it. Come and get it. So, uh, I mean, just go ahead and take the diamond. We're going to back out once. Zoom in on the gramophone here on the left-hand side. For um, for any kids watching, it's this thing right here. It's what old people used to listen to music to. Uh, so take the record, leaning on the box, and then we're going to drag the record over. Now, before interacting with the crank handle and the switch at the bottom, oh, we're going to put the crank handle in, but before we use the crank handle, make sure to hold A while you're on the record, move your cursor left and right very quickly to scratch the record to unlock the waka waka achievement. So do it for about 10 seconds and it should unlock. Once done, then you could just hold the A button on the crank until it gets to the red, then it starts going and the screwdriver pops out. Oh yeah, give me some of that Ruby La Rouge music. Mm. There we go, thank you for the um, P-Hub music, Ruby, but we'll just take the screwdriver from off the floor, then we can back out once. 
Now we are going to go into the central room straight ahead of us. Then we're going to go upstairs. Oh, the bedroom. <laughs> winky, winky. So interact with the egg chair, the white egg chair here. Then we're going to interact with the cushion to get another cheeky, delicious seasoned wedge. Now we can interact with the small plant on the table next to the chair and take the cube from behind that. Then we will back out once and we got a, the first little puzzle for what we need to do. So from left to right then, what we're going to do, we'll interact with the left plant once, the second plant once, the third plant twice, and the right one once. There we go, that will get the stand coming up. Now we need to go ahead and place the telescope on top of the stand. So grab the telescope, pop it on stand, and make sure to grab the wedge piece on the floor just by the telescope as well. And now we're going to back out four times to be back in the room with L. Fisher Rooney. So now we can interact with the console on the right, interact with it twice, and then what we can do is drag the yellow cube to the square hole on the top. Ruby has laid out a lot of puzzles. I mean, if nobody was after her, this is just a pain in the ass, isn't it, if she wanted to use this stuff? Right, so little puzzle coming up now. we just got to put the cubes in the correct order. So we need to put from left to right, it needs to be red, white, orange, blue, and yellow. Now, because... I'm slightly half colorblind in the old head. I thought the orange was red and that the red was actually pink because that's exactly what it looks like to me. But yeah, so red, white, orange, blue and yellow. And then we can take the wedge piece from the panel. That's going to open up in just one. There it is. One millimeter of a second. Right. So once we've got the wedge piece back out twice and we can go straight ahead into the living room. We're almost done with the first chapter, though, by the way. Uh, go to the double doors on the left, drag the screwdriver over to the panel on the right. Now, sometimes if it doesn't work, you have to just zoom in on the thing again, drag the diamond into the laser beam, and this will unlock the cat burglar achievement, and then we can go through the doors and end chapter 1. Congratulations! Be careful, agent. You wouldn't want to fall in. <laughs> to fall in. <laughs> All right, Ruby Carey. Right, so first things first, have a look at this small glass on the table to pick that one up. And then we can smash that little table thing over and grab the wedge piece underneath the chip. Uh, click on the pool here. We're going to get another visible achievement. We just need to hold A on the water until the achievement bad here day unlocks. So after a few seconds, it should unlock. Once it has unlocked, we can just zoom in on the pool filter. So it looks like a little teardrop on it, or a little drop, water drop. Interact with it, drag the glass, not the glass, but rather the glass. Drag it over and fill it up with water. So now we can back out of here twice. Back out unos and twiceos and interact with the stairs in the background. <laughs> <laughs> I think Ruby's got that laughing disease. You know, like Joe Quinn, Joe Quinn, Phoenix's Joker? Hmm, yes. <laughs> anyway, what we're going to do, interact with the plant here on the right, uh, directly sort of in front of us. We're going to grab the letterbox key card. It's in the potted plant. Then we can back out once, zoom in on the red pipe on the left, just close to where we are again. So on the left. We're going to uh, zoom in and then hold the A button to grab the valve handle. And we put it somehow, somewhere in our inventory. Make sure to grab it before we leave, though, of course. Right, so we're going to back out to the front of the house. So back out about seven times. And now we're like, ah, screw this. I'm going home. But actually, we're not going to. We're going to zoom in on the mailbox to the right, just behind this rock, uh, to the right of the house. We're going to interact with it again once more to zoom in, and then we are going to insert the letterbox key card into the slot at the top. 
And now uh, we've got a little puzzle. This isn't random. This will be all, this This will happen all the time. So for the first symbol, you're going to put what looks like the fast forward icon. So two symbols, and then you're going to get two diamonds for the second one. Uh, three lines. Yep, this one. And then it's a circle with a line going through it. And after this one is done, we can take go ahead, take the, the wedge piece and the small key. Why is Ruby hiding so many wedge pieces, bro? You think she just, if she just took them with her, then we wouldn't be able to find her. Stupid. Anyway, back out once and then grab the red pipe or interact with the red pipe on the right. Place the valve handle and then hold A on it until the water stops flowing. And you can tell that by the little bubble meter on the right. There it is. So now we are going to back out of here three times and then continue moving forward through the house uh, again about three times and then go outside. Then we're going to take the steps back down behind the pool area. So heading out to the left here, and then back down the old stepperoonies. So now we can interact with the dark door shaped door right in front of us. There we go. So you're going to walk on the bridge a bit, so you'll have to do it a couple of times. Uh, it's going to reveal a red button there just underneath. So uh, interact with said red button, and then we can take the wedge piece again. And to get in here, again, this isn't random, you just need to click 225. I mean, I, I, I'm assume, I assume you know how a keypad works, 1 to 9, etc. So 225, again, that be, should be the same for everyone. And then you'll get the achievement for open sesame in, for opening a stone doorway, then we can head inside. Now, zoom in once on the workbench, and then what we're going to do is take a look at the setter, bottom center door, uh, and grab the cork from the blue container, go to the right bottom door, <laughs> All right, bottom girls, take the oil can. Right, bottom girls. So in the left pot on the top shelf is another cork, which we're going to grab. And then we're going to go ahead and grab the plunger from the right, just behind the old pigeon forken. Now we can zoom in on the toolbox. And we're going to use the small key that we have found on the lock and interact with it. Now you need to take all the four items here, which is a key light bulb, hammer, and wedge piece, and then we can back out twice. So let us do that now. So back out twice, and then we're gonna use the oil can on the grate in the floor right in front of us. So interact with the grate to open it, and then we can take the wedge piece before backing out. Right, so once we are outside, we're going to zoom in on the three fountains, or the three holes on the right-hand side. Zoom in on the bottom holes, and then we're going to place the corks in the left, of course, and the centre. What are we doing? We're just smashing up a beautiful agent's house because she's <laughs> Dr. <Doctor> Evil. <laughs> uh, yeah, everyone's seen Austin Powers, you know what I mean. Right, we're going to go all the way back out to the mailbox once again. So nipping back to the mailbox area, what we need to do is zoom in on the red pipe twice again. And then we are going to turn the water back on again. Hold the A button to turn the water back on outside of the valve. I mean, that's a lot of pressure. Luckily, we have no arms, so it makes it easier not to get achy arms in this one. Or legs, apparently. We're just a potato rolling around. Right, so interact with the red box just on the side of the mailbox here. And then we can use the key with the red tag in the lock at the bottom. There we go, interact with it again to turn the key, and then you need to move the panel on the left that's hanging loose, and go ahead and take the fuse. So we're gonna back out twice again, and then we're gonna go back to the front doors. But don't go inside just yet, you can't anyway, because it's gonna go smash, bang. So we need to drag the hammer to the flickering light on the left, oosh it out, and now we need to grab the strange pulsing item that just fell down onto the porch, so grab that. Next up, we're going to drag the light bulb to the light. And then we can just interact with the doors again to open them up. See you boys, flying babies. Right, so nip inside and go ahead into the living room, straight in front of us. Interact with the fireplace on the right twice, and then we can use the filled glass from our inventory. Remember, we got that delicious 
uh, urine-stained pool water, because every pool's got urine in it. So don't drink pool water. That's my life advice for there for you. Again, <laughs> make sure to grab the tile piece as well. Back at once, interact with the picture above, and then we can zoom in on the safe. Now, this is a little puzzle again that we've got to do. It should be the same every single time, but the best way to do this is interact with the middle one until the dot is over on the left. So, uh, yep, there we go. So until this uh, middle one, then the outer ring again until the dot is on the left, and then the middle ring until the dot is pointing to the left. So we're going to go ahead, drag the tile into the left corner. Now we just have to make a picture out of this. So if you just want to see the final product, you can skip to 2145 or just follow along. There we go. Once that one is done, you need to smash your ass on the glass to make a big path until basically it opens up and it destroys. Now, this is one of the first random puzzles in the game. So again, get your phone or a pen and paper ready in just a bit. We're going to go and grab the number and we will finish this puzzle. Quite easy to understand when you get there, but we'll get there in just a bit. So... Uh, what we're going to do is head back, and then we're going to go back up the stairs, go to the right, into the bathroom again. We're going to zoom in on the sink another two times. And again. And now we're going to use the plunger. Apparently Ruby likes taking dumps in the toilet, or she likes hiding keys. Either one, we get the key. Now, to get this next missable achievement, make sure to hold A on the drain to clog it again until the, the it reaches the top of the sink, and that will unlock the finger plunge achievement. There we go. So now we're going to start seeing some stuff. Yay. So once that one is done, we can back out four times and go into the living room. Ah, try again. Wrong table. So into the living room, it's this table. We just need to push the buttons in a following order. So you need to, to choose the top right first, then the top left, then the bottom right, and then the bottom left. So that's going to open up this. So what we need to do is insert the triangular key. Yeah, the one at the top. There we go. Triangular shaped key. And now, uh, now these are not random. So you just it's basically like a Simon Says thing. So just go ahead and copy exactly what I do. So... Just go bottom left and then start it up. I'll, I'll try and go slow so you can keep up, but it should be quite easy to do these ones. Ah, 
And once you have done that, hopefully again, um, I, I went slow enough and you could have easily um, caught up right there and you were good to go. But then you can just go ahead, uh, grab the wedge piece back up twice and go back to the left in order to go to the pool area. Go down the stairs and we're going to zoom in on the oh, one fountain that seems to be working. Uh, we're going to interact with that twice. And we can now take the fish bones found in the stream. So now we're going to back out five times to go back to the room with the old fishy sharky fish tank. And once again, we're going to head back upstairs. So we're going to go upstairs first. Don't worry about the fish bones. I'm not getting that yet. Uh, zoom in on the cat. Once we go through to the center, we're going to zoom in on the cat called Onyx. There's only one Onyx, and it, uh, that is a big rock snake Pokemon. So grab the fish bones, give the fish bones to Onyx, and now we can take the circular lens that was behind him. So grab that. From here, we can go straight upstairs to the right using the circular lens on the telescope. Now, this is where the first random number is going to appear. It's going to appear on the lighthouse. Again, it's going to be different every single time. So move up with the left stick. And for me, it is 9223. Write your number down because, once again, it's going to be different for everyone. So after you've written down the number, you can just go ahead and back out four times until we're downstairs to the fish room again. So into the living room we go again, and we're going to head back up the stairs. Now we're going to interact with the middle couch cushion. So the couch on the left there, interact with that twice. And we can insert the strange pulsing item. Now I know what you're thinking. It's not a strange pulsing item used for that, for that kind of pleasure. No, no, no. Uh, so we're going to grab the phone and we're going to back out twice. So now we are going to do that broken keypad puzzle. Now... What's going to happen is, as you can see then, so the numbers on the right are the ones that you got from the lighthouse. So what you need to do, so mine was 9223, so I need to find whatever it was on the left. So again, your lighthouse numbers are on the right, so you need to so you need to find those on the right. So for me again, it's going to be, so if mine was 9, it'll be 3. And then, because it uh, then had 2, I need to grab 8, 8. And then, of course, five, which was four. So mine was 9223. So the numbers you need are on the left. The lighthouse numbers are on the right. So whatever your lighthouse number was, use it on the right. Um, find them on the right. And yeah, so that's, that's how you do that one. So um, again, this is an easy puzzle. You basically just got to get the arrows pointing to each other. So if you want to follow along or just skip forward 30 seconds to see the end producto. So we can't actually do anything with this yet, so we're going to back out twice, go back outside, and use the stairs once again to go down behind the pool. So we're going to go to the room straight in front of us, the shed room apparently. It's a hell of a shed, mind. We can now interact with the panel on the left three times. Now, this is another one of these puzzles, so we're going to need to use the fuse in the second, uh, in the second, the, ob the obvious one on the left. Now, what we're going to do is get the electronic chip from the left to the right, and it is one of those puzzles where you've got to obviously move everything out of the way. Um, I mean, there's no real tactic to this one. Um, just move stuff, and then hopefully you should be good. If you want to skip to the end so you can see where I placed the um, uh, crappy blocks out of the way, you're more than welcome to do that. Uh, and it's about two minutes, it is. So, yeah. So about 30-30. If you want to see the end producto.
Hey, 30-30. I wouldn't like to. All right, 30-27. I did like you. I'm sorry. So back out four times here. We're going to now zoom in on the pool filter area. Now we can grab the piece of the wedge that has just somehow, after the electricity has gone off, it just popped itself up. Works out well for us. More potato wedges for us. So now we're going to back out four times and go up the stairs. So into the fish room, back up the stairs. We're going to go through the central door again and interact with the wooden box. There's going to be a wooden box, a wooden, a wooden books, a wooden box at the bed. So we interact with that one and we now we can place all the yellow wedge pieces into said box and grab the ruby that appears. Rawr. But there's no time to sell these. We need to back out three times. Interact with the yak's head at the top left and place the ruby in its right eye. Now we need to interact with its mouth. There is a mouth on this thing and that will get us a pianola roll. The the uh, the uh, rich pianola roll. Uh, so back out twice. Again, after you've done this, after you've got the piano roll. Uh, go forward into the living room and then we're going to head back upstairs. Now we're going to interact with the piano. We're going to place the rich piano roll in the space there above the keys. Now, basically, again, this is another Simon Says thing. Uh, so the key, the keys are basically numbered from one to seven from the marked key. So you need first one is one, two, and four, and then it is going to be so one, two, four, four six and seven and then for round three if you manage to fail one of these by the way you just have to do it from the beginning again Dude. right so from the marked key again it's one two four four six seven seven six five two and one and now we can finally interact with the levers at the fields. Oh my god, more secrets! What kind of porn up star is Ruby? So, uh, you can interact if you want with the folder, that's just for story related fun stuff. Otherwise, we are going to grab the hacker device, which we just have. So, back out twice again, and then what we're going to do. Uh, after we get out of here, we're going to zoom in on the fingerprint scanner above the fireplace. So we need to use the hacker device on the fingerprint machine. Now, to do this puzzle, basically, um, a bunch of numbers are going to start floating down. All you got to do is press the A button when a white number appears. That's all you got to do for this one. So just press A as a white number appears. It get, does get faster as it goes on, though. <laughs> Oh my gosh, it is a little bomb broski. Yes, it is. So we're going to grab the bomb. We are now going to interact with the case over the button and then push the button for a shortcut scene and the electrician achievement. Give up now, Agent A. Trying to catch me never ends well for secret agents. Oops, she didn't do a laugh. <laughs> so what we're going to do is now zoom in on the blocked entrance here or the the block, whatever, on the, the bottom of the pool. We are going to place the C4 explosive. There's the achievement, by the way. So place the C4 in the center, then place the phone on top of it. Now, you need to make a note of this number. Again, this is a randomly generated number, so make sure to make a note of this one. It's going to be totally different for you. So once you have written it down or taken a picture of it, whichever one it is, we're going to back out five times and then go up the stairs. For some reason, I confuse stairs with a big fish shark tank. Okay. Right. So go back left into the study. We're going to zoom in on the desk and then interact with the telephone. So we're going to grab another missable achievement before we do that. So what you need to do is press the volume button 
to, or turn the phone on, then dial star 69. And of course, that's going to be Ruby's phone call records. <laughs> 69 is not phone call records, by the way. Mm. It's like that. I don't know if you've just seen lately on like crap Bible and stuff, but there's a woman who slept with three on, over 300 men in a year. Oh, here's my secret to how you do it. Lovely. You don't need to tell us how you did that. Uh, right, so just put in the random generated number that you popped in. That'll get the pool going boom, boom. Uh, yes. Here's my secret of how I got laid. I laid on my back, spread my legs. It's, it's, it's pretty self-explanatory. Uh, yeah. Anyway, we've opened that one up. Uh, it's another scene. It's going to unlock the secrets await achievement, and then we can enter through the opening to start the next chapter. Chapter three out of five now. So on to El Rubenita's trap. So let's click on the case a couple of times here until we can see a yellow button just behind the handle. Give that a little push a -roo. Boop. There we go. Now we have to solve a little puzzle. So what we're going to do then, we're going to move the triangle left once and down twice. Move the left diamond up once and then left once. Move the circle... Uh, sorry, move the right diamond left once, and then move the circle right once, up once, and right once. Move both diamonds to where the circle was, right at the very bottom, so just get both of those going down. And now you can put everything in its proper location, so the circle on the left, and then the uh, upside down triangle, and then the square. Right, so once that is done, then you need to interact with uh, both latches or both uh, clasps, whatever the hell they're called. Open them up, and then after all this, we can go ahead and zoom in and take the pencil after we skip the cutscene. <laughs> I am the best. Bruh, stop laughing. Nothing's that funny, Ruby. Right, so uh, zoom in here, click and take the pencil. Um, you can click on the note here from Ruby if you want, but basically under the corner it'll show you a shape that we uh, need to remember later. This isn't random, so you don't actually have to worry about that one. Um, so for now we'll click on the panel on the bottom right side, zoom in on it, and flip the switch. The switch here on the left hand side, give that a little flippy flu. Uh, click on the panel on the left, now we're going to take the glowing object and the electronical chipperoonies, yes. So back out and go back to the panel on the right. We're going to place the electronic chip where the electronic chip Arani is meant to be. Take the power cell, back out, and now we can place that power cell in any of the open spots by the big red button. Now, there is going to be a... Uh, a puzzle that is going to appear in a minute. Now, it's not random, but you do have to do it. So basically, what I'm going to do is show you a still picture. It's it's circle rotating, but you basically have... This is the finished product here. So you need to click... Uh, so say if you're going from the top, you need to click the top twice, the next one once, the next one twice, the next one once, nothing on the next one, and then twice and once. You have to... It doesn't matter what uh, shape you do it in, as long as it's in that particular order. So once it is in that particular order, um, again, the, the order is the one that matters. Um, the shape of it after doesn't matter. So once you put it in the particular order, it'll go correct and it'll sort itself out. And now there's another puzzle to do so what we need to do is on the front panel here the um top left you need to click so as you can see you can't just put them all in order it's got to be a specific order obviously so top left first then bottom right then the very left side so the middle left side middle right side top right and bottom left now, again, this next puzzle, uh, the if you have a look at the black squares on the left, this is another puzzle. So, again, just fast forward by a minute or so if you want to see the end product. Uh, but this should not be random. This will be the same for everyone again.
There we go. Once that's done, we're going to back do out. I <laughs> oh, I would do that. If I, oh, maybe maybe I, would. I would. I don't know. It's not that funny, though. Stop laughing. Right, so back out. Go to the camera in the top left of the room. Now, again, these are going to be randomly generated symbols, so you need to make note of these symbols. So again, get your phone out, get your pen and paper out. And these symbols right here on the left are always going to be different. Ignore the blocks on the right. It's just the symbols on the left that you need to be popping down. So once you have written these down, uh, we can back out three times and move to the left side of the central stand. So once we get to the left, what you're going to see is the metal handle, the metal rod getting out of the fan. So take that one. And what we're also going to do is now take the glowing object and make sure to grab all 10 of the little plugs. Uh, so some will obviously fall on the floor, so make sure to grab every single one. Um, and now we're going to start doing the whole mouse talking to Trevor thing. So let's back out of here a couple of times. Go to the right hand side. And as you can see, there's two mouse holes on the bottom. So effectively, what you're going to do is interact with the right hand side mouse hole. And Trevor's going to stick his big, fat, chunky mouse nose out. Now, again, so what you have to do then, in terms of the conversation, he's basically just going to go between each hole. So you just need to keep going between each mouse hole, talking to Trevor, Trevor until the dialogue um, uh, just stays the same. So keep going back and forth until the dialogue is no more, until it is all exhausted. And that should be it. So when you say, I should get back to business to catch that pee upstairs. So what you need to do now is click on the holes here on the wall. Now, again, this isn't going to be randomly generated. This will always be the same shape. So it's kind of like a backward seven, more or less. So that's, uh, so yeah, just follow along. It's very easy. So you just got to put all of the plugs on the top shelf, uh, or the, the top shelf, the top line, the, um, one on the very right hand side on the second shelf and then you just go in down as if you're doing a number seven so it'd line diagonally down or horizontally down which one's the one where you go down like that yeah that one so as you can see it's kind of like a backward seven something like that so hello my name is seven double oh <laughs> yes i am that wish james bond actually i'm bald so it would be like more like wish hitman so shit man right so make sure that trevor's uh, sticking his head out of the second mouse hole, the left-hand side mouse hole. Then go into the uh, lever on the main stand, pull that lever down, and obviously it's going to change huge direction. Ah! Oh, because as you can see, the one mouse hole is still there with Big Trev, but the other one has disappeared. So uh, go back onto the mouse hole then. And there he is. So he's going to go whoop. And he's going to disappear now over to the other side. So we need to back out three times once again, and we need to go to the mouse hole on the left. So there we go, just underneath the camera is where we need to go. So sticky nugget in that one. So grab the key. Now remember to continue working towards the missable achievement. Just keep on hitting Trevor until he uh, until the dialogue remains the same. So this is pretty much it. So it's only a couple of times there, but. You know, just in case, just keep spamming the A button there. So we're going to back out twice. We're going to go to the floor on the right-hand side where the other mouse hole was. And there's going to be this circle. Uh, we're going to use Trevor's key to unlock it to unlock the next puzzle that we've done. Uh, or the, the one puzzle that we've done earlier with the spinning ball. And, well, you'll see in just a minute. So again, I have put, the, uh, for the next sort of 20 seconds or so, it's going to be a still image. And this is the shape that you need. So again, too big, one little... Then nothing, then big, small, big, and nothing again. So as long as it is in that order, like you've seen earlier, it'll sort itself out. And then, yeah, then we can, there we go. So then we can move on. Job done. So 
Now we're going to insert the meta list of the hand lists. And again, we're just going to continue to hold the A button until the camera shifts. And what that's going to do is whack open the bottom. This was the number seven, or the backwards number seven. Um, lucky number seven. So that's going to grab the power cell, so we can grab that one. And we're going to back out three times now until we're going to see the safe. Um, here it is. So the safe just by the old mousy bit. So uh, what we're going to do is click on the panel, which is at the bottom right of this bit, right near the floor the, uh, here. So again, with these symbols, obviously with the symbols that we've already written down, we won't worry about this uh, just for now, but you flip the switch, this opens up the panel, open up the glowing object, uh, zoom in and hit the black and yellow um, hit thing, and then make sure to press the triangle button here. What that will do then is get a laser up. I actually forgot to do it now, but I'll do it later. So don't worry if you don't do it now, it's fine. Or if you do do it, it's all good. Um, but yeah, so there's three lasers we're gonna need. So. On the left hand side then is the next grate. What we're gonna do is use the pencil in the slot on the right hand side. Then we'll interact with it to slide it down. Opening the door. And just before we do this little puzzle, let's steal a chisel because we got the inventory of the pure agencies. Right, so from left to right, what you need is red, light blue, green, and dark blue. So again, from left to right, that is red, light blue, green and dark blue. Now, this next puzzle took me a while to figure out, but it's kind of easy when you do it. So basically we need all the arrows pointing to the right. So it can be tricky, but we'll just do it. So you fr uh, press A on the button to freeze it. Once the first arrow at the top, right -hand, uh, top left hand corner is pointing in the same direction as the other one, then you go for the third one. We'll wait for it to go to the next one and then do the same thing again. So just freeze this fourth one in place until they're all lined up at the top. There we go. Now I kind of got lucky and got the middle one all, um, all lined up, even though I just completely mashed that one up. So I just had to uh, re-correct myself, but that's all you do then. So you literally freeze it in place until the next arrow gets to that point. And then to finish this one off, what you need to do then is we'll just uh, hold one of them until the top of the bottom ones go to the right and then do the same then with the bottom one and once this is done uh, a little code is going to be printed off and this is another completely randomly generated one so you're going to have to write this bit down as well so again it's going to be totally different for you so make sure to write this down or snap a little cheeky pick pick So now we're going to back out, we're going to go back to the main central stand and now we're going to take the tiny little red key just by the lever at the top there. So grab the tiny key and then we're going to back out once and change the room back again by sticking the lever up. I backed out too many times, sorry, so chuck it back up. The wall's going to change again and there we go. So on the left is now going to be just an incredible loose brick. You ain't got nothing on me, Ruby Rouge. So there it is. There's the loose brick. You can see it. We're going to zoom in it twice. We're going to use the chisel on the brick. And we're going to get ourselves another glowing object. Kind of just looks like somebody's glass eye that was stealing. Sorry. Oh, you're already blind in one eye, so what does it matter? Uh, so back out once. And then we're going to actually take the loose brick off the floor as well. And then we're going to go back and go to the right side of the stand. So go to the right side of the stand. And then what you're going to do is place the brick on the button at the foot of the stand on the right. So we'll get that one. So once you pop the brick down, we're going to back out again. And then we're going to go to the left side of the stand. Now we can collect the glowing object from underneath it. And then we're going to click on the yellow and black button again. And we are going to click on the arrow button. This will get the, it's supposed to be the second laser up and pointing. So now we're going back to the central panel again, and then this time we are going to use the tiny key on the lock. So just in front of the stand, and this will grab us the finally last glowing object. 
So now we're going to back out twice again, and we're going to go to the right side of the stand once more. A lot of back and forth here. Just too much agency work for me, personally. Uh, now we can place all six glowing objects in the panel. And once we have done that, there is going to be more symbols that we need to um, write down. Again, it's going to be randomly generated, different for you. So there they are, they're just on the bottom right-hand corner. That is where the next set of symbols are. So you can click on, zoom on them, zoom in on them, and make sure to write them down. So once uh, we'll click interact with the grey button then, and we'll come back to that in just a minute, interact with the yellow and black as well, open that up, click the diamond to get the next laser going. So you should have three lasers now, but uh, I'm just going to go back and get that one up in just a bit. So what we'll do is now change the lever and uh, put it back down in order to change the room once again. Now what we can do is actually go back to the safe and what you're going to see in the top left hand corner is so all the symbols basically that we've written down um, you are going to see the symbol and it will equate to a number so say if your symbol there it is look so, so say, say if your symbol is X uh, say X I A and E whatever it is so you would need to put 2, 3, 7 and 11 into the safe so everything here is how it should be so what you've got to do then is just look at what symbols you've written down and then just put whatever number it is into the safe. And you're going to have to do that with all three of the symbols that you've written down. Same here. Easy cheesy, right? Right, I won't let you down. Sorry, I don't know why I've got to do a hit of Scottish in every video so far. Sorry. Right, so anyway, grab the power cell. That should be now two power cells that we've got. Now, what we need to do is just line up the lasers on the floor to get the last power cell. Now, obviously, what I um, completely forgot to do, in fact, I'm going to do this bit first. So, with the top left laser, what you're going to do is interact with it and put the... Um, Small black dot there over to the right. And then with the laser in front of the left one, you are going to rotate it so that the circle is pointing down. And then, of course, me being an absolute noob tube, forgot to um, pop the next diamond in. So, uh, next laser out. So, we'll just pop that one out. <laughs> but if you already got it out, then you need to put the black dot over to the right hand side. And there will be a short scene. So, with the laser on the right, make sure to put the black dot over to the right hand side. And that should get stuff going.
So for the final time then, go to the right, sta right side of the stand, collect the last power cell. There it is, my cell. It's my, my cell. Back out twice, and then we're gonna go back to the top of the case on the stand. And then what you need to do is zoom in, place the power cell back out. Zoom in, place the power cell, and just get all four of them going. And now, you know what it says not to click the big red button? Well, boy, we, oh, <laughs> you better push that big red button. Cutscene's gonna happen, and then uh, you're gonna get the save the date achievement, and then what we all need to do when the case flips, we just have to click a whole bunch of stuff. So you just need to click, um, click everywhere. So keep clicking, basically, until chapter three ends. And then chapter four, El Beginos. <laughs> What the hell's funny, man? I literally just destroyed the bomb and she's like, oh no. <laughs> All right, Jesus, mate. Right, so chapter four begins, interact with the middle box. And we are gonna zoom in and we just get rid of all the shoes. That's a hell of a shoe collection, by the way. No pairs, barely any pairs, but there we go. Uh, grab the cabinet key, back out once, zoom in and open the box to the right. Click to move the paper and collect the blueprint piece. Now, all these blueprint piece numbers are going to be, again, randomly generated and completely different. So again, obviously just get your notepad ready or your mobile phone. So select the grated cabinet here above and use the cabinet key to um, unlock the doors. You have to do it yourself. Collect the screwdriver on the right hand side and make sure that you interact with the spider web here. We need to interact with six spider webs on the left hand side. So that's all it is. It's literally just, you just have to click it once and then it's good to go. Um, to be honest, I thought some, we had to, get rid of some spiders or the spider web got destroyed, but no, just click on it once, that's all good. So that's one out of six done. So go to the bottom left-hand side of the vent. You can already see Trevor. There he is, hello. But uh, we're not gonna bother with him just yet. Oh, in fact, actually, yes, we are. We are gonna bother with him just yet. So uh, keep clicking on him until the dialogue uh, st uh, keeps repeating, which is there. So that's Trevor three out of four now. And then what we'll do is use the screwdriver on the vent and then we can end entree the ventry. Right, so you need to click forward and there's gonna be another little cutscene here. I told you to end Agent A quickly. <laughs> Man, you need to chill out in the laughing, bro. Have a cry for once. Right, uh, interact with the spider web just in front of us in the top left corner. And then we're gonna to go to the right. And then we have to click on the blockade a few times in order to break it and go forward. So this is basically the uh, computer room. Doesn't look like a computer room, but it will be when we change uh, when we change a couple of things. So just on the table then in front of the TV is a cheesy baguette. So uh, interact with the table a couple of times before we can grab it. And then we're going to back out twice. And we're going to go to the plant, which is to the left side of the door. So the left plant, click on it twice, and then we can zoom in on the big red button to push it. And then we, once the lever is revealed, we can pull that one down, and that's going to go... That is my uh, interpretation and noise of a room changing. Or it sounds like an aeroplane with one engine remaining. Eek. So zoom in on the yellow screen with the big number one, and take the blueprint piece from underneath. And then we're going to back out four times to get back to the blueprint room. And hello, here we are back at the blueprint room. So you need to zoom in on the blueprint on the right. And then we're going to place both of the blueprint pieces on the poster. And again, make sure to write this number down as it changes with every playthrough. It's completely different for you. So make sure to write it down. Now, once you have written it down, we can then back out twice and go down to the mouse hole at the bottom left by the vent again. Ah, 
And for being such a good little mousy wousy, we are going to uh, click on Trevor for any new dialogue, which shouldn't be happening yet. But after we give Treasure, a uh, treasure, Trevor, the old cheeky cheesy of the baguetness, he's going to enjoy that. So we'll collect the key and then we will click on Trevor again for any more um, dialogue. But the achievement should now unlock. So that's talk time with treasures, uh, Trevor, bloody treasure. So we grab the small key, now we can back out twice, go to the higher bit of the room. We've got the small opening we smashed open, so we can zoom on it, and we're going to click it open, use the key on it, and we can take the hacking software. As it turns out, hacking software um, comes in handy, would you believe? So now we need to go back to the computer room with the uh, yellow screen with the number one on it. So again, just again, in order to go through the vent, you need to click forward, and then right, and then forward again. We'll be coming back and forth here through quite a lot, so it's very easy to get to. Anyway, uh, interact with and click the yellow screen again. We're going to insert the hacking software into the drive. And all you got to do is then enter the code that you got, specifically from the blueprint pieces, and then press enter. So once you have pressed enter, um, the first bit of security clearance is unlocked. Make sure to press the bottom of the right hand side in order to get your hacking software back. Very important that we get that back. If not, you'll just have to find it wherever you placed it. Uh, so interact with the flashing number one panel. There we go, a couple of times and through the next room is, uh, we'll just, I mean, we'll call it the elevator room. This is an elevator room of sorts. So click on the darker sort of colored bricks here on the left hand side. And then this is another little puzzle that we got to do. So here we go. So interact with that. Now you need to click the top right brick. So top right. And then middle right. Then top left. Then bottom left. Then bottom right. And then what's going to happen? A door's going to open and we can go straight to the outside. We can breathe once more that fresh air that smells freshy. So we are going to take the path to the right. There's only two paths to go. So if you click the floor to the right, we'll go here into this area. Zoom in on the orange tree twice and we can grab, grab the blueprint priest from here. Also, we're going to grab another missile achievement. So back out from the tree once and on the left side is an antenna. So if you just click quickly press this 10 times, we should get the boing, boing, boing achievement. Oh, yeah. And then, yes, if you want to open the box, you can, but we're not going to be coming back here for a while. So go back, and we're going to go up the mountainside, so straight ahead. We're going to zoom in on the red box, which is on the right side, just by the tower ladder. You can just see it off in the distance. There it is. And then we're going to click on it a couple of times until we can collect yet another blueprint piece. There it is, sitting on the top. Right, so now we're going to just keep pressing the B button to back out until we get all the way to the blueprint room once more. And once more then, obviously what we're going to do is um, pop all the blueprint pieces on. And again, make sure to make a note of this number because it's going to be different for you. So once you have um, smashed that one off and down, we're just going to head all the way back to the top of the mountain that we just were. So yeah, a lot of back and forth in this chapter. So write down this number and then head all the way to the top of the mountain again. Now, being a secret agent, oh man, it takes a lot of cardio. Meh, meh. Okay, here we are. So, back on to the wooden shack. So we're going to the left of the wooden shack, right here. And then what we're going to do is open up the left side, get the level 2 screen up. We're going to pop our hacking clearance software in. And then, of course, what you're going to do is write your number down, uh, whatever number it was. Press enter and make sure to press the glowing button to get your hacking software back. Thank you. 
Right, now let's start going some more places then. So, we're going to back out to the computer room. Or the, uh, sorry, the elevator room. So back out a couple of times. To get inside of the elevator room here, we're going to enter the room on the right-hand side now. So we can click the panel and just nip straight through. Hooray, new places. So, first of all, take the TV remote off the table in front of us. There it is. That is for a puzzle in Chapter 5. That big thing right there, so don't worry about that. Back out and then pick up the wrench off the floor. We're going to click on the jetpack on the right-hand side a few times until we can see and click a red button. Luckily, Ruby doesn't appear to be anywhere in this house, so we're all good. Right, so uh, grab the bucket from the bottom of the cabinet that we just destroyed. <laughs> Sorry. Um, now we can back out of this room three times, and we're going to go to the elevator this time. So go straight through into the elevator. We're going to go to more exotic locations in this house and trousen. Click on the button, and we're going to go inside, and we're going to select floor level minus one. So, some fun rooms coming up. So, first of all, interact with the cat flap here on the left-hand side. While it's open, take the blueprint piece. And then we can back out twice to go back to the elevator and go back to floor level zero. And then we're going to back out to the computer room. And this time we're going to use the tube in the middle of the room. So, now we can actually have security clearance on it. We can use the tube and guess where we're going to end up. <gasps> we're gonna end up in here, yeah. Actually, no, we're just heading back into the house. Hooray! Right, to interact with Onyx the cat, we can take the blueprint piece from her. Go up the stairs immediately on your right and take the next blueprint piece off the floor. We're gonna go into the bathroom on the right hand side. And then we are going to turn on the shower. It might be on, but it might be off. If it's off, turn it on. And what we can do then is fill up the bucket with water. So, yeah, there's a filled bucket, believe it or not. So, back out and now go to the study, which is on the left. We will zoom in straight ahead and look at the red switch on the wall. So just to the left of the clock. So collect the blueprint piece and the club's key from the shelf. And then we can flip the switch itself. And then we'll back out a couple of times in order to go to the hallway. Up pops the screen. Oh, very snooky. Very snooky snooky. So back out a couple of times, like I said. Go to the hallway and go straight into the bedroom. Zoom in on Onyx the Rock Pokemon Cat. And take the next blueprint piece. And then from here, we can go back downstairs, take the fish tank tube back down, and then head all the way back to the blueprint room. It's Snelf. And again, you know what to do here then. So zoom in on the blueprint. Chuck all the pieces on and then make sure to write the next number down because, of course, as I said, it's going to be totally different for you. So make sure to zoom in and write down the next number. And then we're doing a lot more back and forth. So what we need to do now is go back into the computer room, take the tube up, go to the stairs, go left into the study, and use the whole hacking software thing and type in the number that you got. So yes, yeah, very back and forth this chapter.
Right, so back out another four times and we will use the fish shark tank tube top once again. And then what we'll do when we get here, we can go forward, enter the elevator and take it to floor minus one again. So this time what we'll do is interact with the flashing door on the right since we got level three security clearance. Um, now it's going to just destroy itself because as it does, um, and then we will p grab the blueprint just partially underneath the door right there. So there we go. Once you grab that blueprint piece, we'll back out twice and then we'll take the elevator to floor zero. Now we're going to back out until we are in the vent, but at the part where we um, split where the spider web is. So at this point, but this time what we're going to do, we're going to go straight here, just past the spider web. And we're going to use our level 3 clearance to push the button on the left. That's going to get a little um, path pathway going across. And then what we'll do is go straight and we will hold the A button to rotate the handle until the arrow is pointing uh, 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 up. Wow, who just done something bad? Nobody. We're going to head back to the elevator room now. So not the blueprint room, sorry. I went a little bit too far there. We're heading back to the elevator room. And then what we'll do then, instead of going into the elevator, we're going to go outside using the left door. And then what you'll see on the left by the fan is another blueprint piece. Right, mate. Nice job. So what we'll do, we'll go straight up to the mountain top. Now, what we're going to do is uh, we're going to set off the jetpack. So it is by the red, um, not mailbox, but this thing. So interact with the jetpack a couple of times, press the red button, and it'll go nuts once more. <laughs> So next up, you're going to zoom in on the red box. You're going to use the wrench to open up the red box. And then you're going to use the filled bucket on the electricity inside the box. Now, my high advice is don't do this in real life. Because, uh, you know, you might get electroconocuted. And if you don't have any hair, you'll probably grow some hair. So you open up the gate and you climb the ladder once. But don't electrocute yourself. Just go for a hair transplant. It's easier. Open up the red box on the right. And we're going to take the gas hose and the swipe card. And then we'll back out once more and we'll climb up the ladder just one more time. And what you need to do is you can see the cables on the left. So just interact with the bottom most cable. And then what you can do is just click on them once and that will connect them going nice. And then once they are connected, back out all the way to the blueprint room again. And of course, you know what to do. Put the pieces on and make sure to note this number down. Again, it's going to be different. So back out twice from here and then go forward back to the elevator room. So when we get here, then we will take a left to go back outside. And then what we're going to do is take the right path once again, where we open the green box to get the mine, mine, mine achievement. So 
So ye know what TD. Number four, put the hacking data in, put in the number that you've written down, and make sure to take the hacking CD back out. Okay, and now we're going to go back once again to the elevator and we're going to take it to floor minus one. We're going to get another achievement here as well for sneaking into Ruby à la Rouge's Réderde. So down to minus one. And then what we're going to do is go straight through to the gold door and get your buns in Ruby's hands. Oh, Ruby's secret room, I meant. Oh, so now it's starting to get a little spooky, or a little something. So, in we go. First of all, we're going to go to the left and go across the tiny little wooden bridge. So we're going to have to select it twice. There's the very, very schnicky achievement. Um, go to the fireplace and click the fireplace tools on the left here. Um, then we will zoom in and open the chest and collect the diamonds key and the lighter. Wow. So we're going to back out to the beginning of the room, so to the rocks just before the bridge. Now, on your, on, there's two rocks here. The smaller one will, uh, will push that one in and a little red button will appear so we can push that one. And up the wooden piers we go. So there we go. Uh, so we're now on to Ruby's desk. Don't know why we needed some steps. We could have literally just jumped up, but if we push all three buttons on, and um, we now need to put in the password. It should be the same every single time. Onyx, which is O-N-Y-X. And we can then hit enter. And then what you need to do is click on the top email and just keep selecting continue until a cutscene plays and the recon expert achievement unlocks. There it is. Oh, yeah. So you can probably tell what our next objective is going to be. So what we're going to do, we'll back out around seven times or so until we get to the elevator. And we will take the elevator back to floor zero. So when we get here, we're going to back out one more time to the computer room. And then we're going to pull the lever on the left in order to change the room back. Then, and again, what you need now is your, uh, there's another random number coming up, but you have to be quite quick with it. So we'll zoom in on the TV, use the TV remote on the TV, and there's going to be a phone number that we need Is that's going to be advertised. It's the last four digits. So it's 555, then it's the last four digits every time. So for me, it's 1919. So either remember it or quickly write it down. You can press pause as well, and you can write it down. So don't worry about that. But it does go off here. So uh, just be aware of that. Again, for me, it was 1919, but for you, whatever it is, yeah, make sure that you remember that one. So we're going to back out and go back through the door to the elevator room. So straight in front of us, once again, we're going to go back through the door on the right. And then we will go all the way to the back and have a look in the cabinet. So now we can unlatch and we will open up that cabinet. Oopsie. Well, that hasn't gone well. Stick your hand in the Bernie stuff, bruh. Should be fine. Anyway, interact with the uh, red tube coming out of the burner. Then we can use the gas hose. And we can obviously click that one on. Put it as far left as you can there. There we go. Then use the lighter to light the burner. And then we can finally take the lab key out of Zerk and Daniel. Right, so now what we're going to do, we're going to back out four times and take the elevator once again to floor minus one. And then what we'll do from here, we can go straight ahead and go back through Ruby's room. So again, uh, click the obviously flashing button and go straight through. Uh, so from now, we will go up the stairs to the desk again. Now we're going to zoom in and we will use the lab key 
in order to unlock the drawer which is underneath the desktop. This is another random number that you're gonna need to write down. It's Ruby's account number. So take the tape, first of all, and then again, either remember, take a picture, or write down the account number. Again, it'll be different for absolutely everyone. So, you know, be a little sneaky. Shoe phone? I wonder what a shoe phone is. Anything, anything sneaky on there? Extra sneaky sneakers? Okay. Any durable contacts? I don't know. Uh, so anyway, there we go. So now, once you've made a uh, note of Ruby's account number, back out. We're going to the elevator and we're going back to floor zero again. And uh, what we're going to do, we're going to go back out to the computer room, pull the lever on the left, and uh, change it back to the uh, other room, the sadly, the secret computer room. Right, head up the old fish tank tube shop. Now from here, we can go up the stairs on your right. Yes. And then we will go to the left into the study. Now we're going to use the phone in order to dial for Spy Boy. That's literally what she talks like. That's not me making a funny accent noise. So again, what you need to do then is press the volume button or whatever it is. For me, again, it was 555-1919. For you, it's whatever the last four digits were. Spy Boy. Welcome to Spy Boy for all your spy gadget needs. Make sure to choose the third option here as well for the portable hard drive, and then we just need to enter the account number, which you should, again, have written down. Spy Boy. Congratulations! Your item will be there in a jiffy. Thank you for shopping with Spy Boy. Right, so now what we'll do is back all the way out of the house and go back to the mailbox to get our Spy Boy portable hard drive. So it should be there nicely and precisely. Yep, you don't have to do any puzzling here. We've done all the puzzling bits. So grab the portable hard drive. Then we can go back into the house, go back down the old fish tank tube top and take the elevator to floor minus one and go straight through into Ruby's uh, golden door, the golden door. Golden balls of doors. So, since we are here, we'll go back up to the computer. Now we can zoom in on the computer, put the portable hard drive into the computer, and select download, which will unlock the extraction. Oh yeah. Don't put anything... Although, I wonder if there's anything... <laughs> I wonder if there's anything on Ruby's computer. Ah, uh, just some... Just a lot of wiener pics from everyone in her DMs. That sounds about right for every unfortunate female. These days, they get some DMs off their friends, and then they get a lot of wiener pics. That's yes, that's uh, that's how you pull a lot of ladies, fellas. Just send them your dick. Right. So once we are back up here into the elevator room, we're gonna go to the left door, back up to the mountain top. Yes, back up to the mountain top. Go. Oh. Um, and then we will zoom in on the right four times, and we will climb the ladder. All the way to the top, which is a thinking of but another four times. So just go ahead and use the tape with the broken satellite dish here. And then once you've done this, we're gonna back out about six times and go to the left over to the wooden shack. Wood shack, baby, wood shack. Now, with the wood shack, we have to interact with the right side. We're almost done now with this chapter, so zoom in on the right side. Use the swipe card in order to open up the panel. Insert the portable hard drive into the reader and select send when it pops up. This will unlock the Radar Rebel achievement. And then you just need to back out a couple of times until a cutscene plays, and that will be the end of Chapter 4. A ruby ruby roo.
Agent LaRouge, it's time. Good. That was my uh, Futurama Nixon impression, of course. Anyway, uh, we will uh, let's begin chapter five. So, we will zoom in once again and activate the little red button on the jetpack in order to get that flying like a beehiving piece of shizen. And then, what we will do from here is take the next blueprint piece and the spring. Should only be two items. Grab the blueprint piece. Brim, brim, brim. And the spring, and then we're heading all the way back. So keep pressing the B button to go back to the blueprint room. And Sergeant, you know the drill. Uh, chuck all the, well, the final remaining blueprint piece. Again, it's another random number, so make sure to write this down, take a picture, or remember it with your fantastic brainos. And then we will back out and go back to the computer room, or go forwards to the computer room again. And yes, it is quite a bit more back and forth for a bit. We're going to take the tube back up to the house, and then we will go back up the stairs. As soon as we get here. So back up the stairs we go. Left into the study once more. We got, uh, This is just another missable achievement we're grabbing. So use the phone again to dial spy by. So you should have the uh, same phone number and the same account number. Which you wrote down from chapter 4. Um, so after you do this, what you need to do is order the shoe phone. So when it appears, choose the second option. Option number 2 for spy by shoe phone. Bye for all your spy gadget needs. Press one to place an order. Please enter your account number. Congratulations! Your item will be there in a jiffy. Thank you for shopping with Spy Boy. And the same thing as we did with the portable hard drive. Go all the way back out to the mailbox. Grab your shoe phone. And the glorious shoe phone achievement shall be yours. Right, so now we've got that little bit of annoyance out of the way, or that little missable achievement, we will now go back through to the house, use the tube in order to go down, and we're going to head forward to the elevator room. <laughs> Um, but we're not going to take the elevator. Uh, what we're going to do when we just nip forward here, we're going to go through the door on the right. We will finally um, progress some more story stuff. There we go. So now take the door on the right. Uh, click on the yellow number four panel, or the flashing number four panel. Um, and we're going to click that just a couple of times here. So once that is uh, done, that'll open up the number five. Then we can use the hacking software. Enter your number that you got earlier and press enter and that should be it for the hacking software anyway. Okay then, so what we're going to do, we're going to go back outside now, so back to the elevator room. to Go into the elevator and take it once again to floor minus one. Um, now we will zoom in on the broken panel on the right hand side twice. We're going to start finally smashing through these. So we're going to use the spring on the broken panel. That will actually open up the door. I don't know why you could have just straightened out that other spring, but there we go. Who knows? Right, go inside. Now what we're going to do, we need to zoom in on the colored buttons. Now what the actual answer to this is, you need to press every button on the panel except yellow, green and white. So every colored button except yellow, green, and white. Welcome back, Agent LaRouge. Initiating anti-gravity device. Please wait. Thank you. Um, <clears throat> I mean, 
Thank you. I am La Rouge, the agent. Do you uh, is it seeds? Um, mm, Ruby's toys are way more fun. <laughs> I ain't seen a word, bruh. Right, so once we uh, obviously take the floating heart key right there, and uh, which was to the left of the box, once you got the heart key, go back to the elevator, and we're going to take it to floor minus two. So we're going to do a couple of more puzzles, which seem complicated, but they're not actually too bad. So the first thing we're going to do is interact with the button on the floor. And all you got to do is basically slide the colored pieces into their place. Now, again, the, the easiest way to do that is start with the inside piece, just like we did with the other one earlier in chapter one. So start with the inside, then the, um, well, the second one, so the one just above it. And then I decided to go with the third piece. And then just move the uh, middle piece in again. So it's basically in, out, and the middle one. Now, this next one, so basically, you can see a bunch of dots. Basically, the dots are going to move around the door, and you need to stop it at the correct times to make the correct pattern. So for this first one, you need to stop it when it's at the very bottom of the right-hand side. Then what it'll do is change direction, and you need it to hit the fifth dot. So one, two, three, four, five. So hit the fifth dot. Then it's going to change direction again. Now do the penultimate dot. And then it's the seventh dot that we need to stop it on, and then the ninth dot. So there we go. So once you have done that, so uh, yeah, it's it's basically five, um, five. So yeah, you start with the last one, then five, then next to last, then seven, and then nine. So once you've done that, you can go through, interact with the third light, as you could just see. Uh, so the one that is flashing. On the left-hand side of the room, we're going to take the red ornate gem and the ammunition. I mean, there's cool-ass ninja stars to take as well, but apparently we don't need them. Hmm. What a way to smash up a submarine then with ninja weapons. Yeah, ninja weapons. And on the right-hand side, you're going to see a crowbar and a very sneakily hidden spades key right where the cursor is right now. So make sure you've got all four of those items from that room, and we'll go back... And we are going to actually take the stairs down to go to the beach. Let's go to the beach, each. No, stop singing that. Right, so first of all, we're going to go left twice. Zoom into the waterfall and we're going to take the black fuel hose. After we have grabbed old black snakey, we're going to back out three times to get into the sort of middle again. And then we're going to go right. So let's take a right here. Now, zoom in on the sort of, well, the structure. I you call it a structure, but it's like, you know, a metal piece of crap. You need to zoom in on the structure a couple of times and then take the gas can right there from just behind the barrels. Now, use the fuel hose and the gas can on the tipped over barrel to get, believe it or not, a filled up gas can. So we'll back out a couple of times again, and then what we'll do is head back to the boat. So zoom in on the boat, and you might have to do it a couple of times, because then we can remove the fuel cap on the back, and then we can use the filled gas can in order to get it some gas. And then what you can do is simply interact with the boat, and off you go to the lighthouse. Yes, you'd think it would be a submarine, but no, tis but the lighthouse. So first of all then, we're going to go to the large rock here on the left. And there's a stone artifact, which we're going to need. It's slightly hidden. There it is, just behind the big uh, rock. Back out once, and then we're going to go around to the left of the lighthouse. So we go towards the lighthouse, and then to the left of it. Uh, we're going to zoom in on the wooden box and open it up. First of all, make sure to interact with the third out of six spider webs. There that one is. And then obviously grab the antique key. And tiki. And tiki tiki. So, uh, go back and interact with the door of the lighthouse, and then you can obviously use the antique key key in the lock, and then interact with it to unlock the door and head inside. Another two spider webs are popping out here. Uh, fairly obvious where they are. So, one's on the left of the lift, and then the next one is on the right. So, that's going to be spider web four, five, uh, four and five. Now, take the shovel. There's a shovel leaning on the right wall, which we are going to take. Spiders. You know I hate spiders. Only the ones that are Australian. The rest are tiny and not so bad. 
Um, right, so we're going to back out and we're going to zoom in on the red battery here, just to the left of the elevator. Pick that up, and then we're going to back out six times in order to go back to the other side of the beach each. Beep, 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 each. So we'll back out a couple of times. We're going to go back to the right towards the uh, gas barrels. Uh, zoom in on them once. So just zoom in on the gas barrels once, and you can see just in front of the barrels are three little rocks. So what you need to do... Nope, too far. Too far. Uh, God damn it, too far again. Right, there we go. So now we are here. Grab the shovel and interact it with the three rocks. And then what you can do is interact with the pile of sandy dirt and take the rusty box out of the hole and keep backing out until we are back in the elevator and go back to floor zero. So once we are in the middle of the room, interact with the ornament on the table. Now all you're going to do then is just put the uh, whatever suit keys that you got in the obviously corresponding bit. So spade into spade, club into club, heart to heart, diamond into diamond. You know how to make things fit. So what you're going to need to do then is collect the ornate gem. Now you have to make a note of this puzzle. Easiest thing I done was just to take a picture because the uh, uh, this this puzzle is different again every single time. So make sure that you take a picture of this puzzle, or if you don't, or if you've forgotten, just come back to the elevator room and have a look. But just make sure, like I said, it's easier to either write it down or it's even easier to take a picture, and then you can look at it later on. So um, it's all the coloured boxes, of course, is which, what you need in. So back out again, I'm going to go through the right door. This time I'm going to zoom in under the number five computer screen. We are going to place the battery on its charger to the right of the gun there, so pop it in. So what we're going to do is get another missable achievement. So uh, just back out of here then, and uh, while this is charging now, we can use the ammunition on the gun. And then we can fire it by interacting with the trigger. That's going to smash the watermelon to pieces. From where the watermelon was, we're now going to place the rusty box uh, on it. Back out, um, back out once again, and fire once more. And that will obviously, uh, that will give us the machete. We're going to grab a machete. -a. So grab the machete, -a, and it's time for another missable achievement, as I said. So what you need to do then is back out twice from here, and then literally just keep interacting with the trigger a hundred times until you get a slow-mo mini scene and the target practice achievement unlocks. Shouldn't take more than 30 seconds or so. And now she blows, mateys. Target practice. Right, so we'll back out, we'll grab the battery, which should now be fully charged, and then we're going to go back to the elevator and take it to floor minus two. Hi guys, welcome to floor minus two. Right, go back down the stairs and we'll go left to interact with the boat in order to go to the lighthouse. We're going to go inside the lighthouse, and then we're going to put the battery in the battery compartment. And, uh, yeah, that'll get us going up the lift. Right, so now we've finally got that one working. We will go about halfway up the lift. So hold the A button in order to go up. Don't go all the way up. Stay about here. That's fine because we need to interact with the um, uh, panel on the left. And that will get us the rope. So once you've grabbed that, we can now continue on to the top. We're going to be getting another achievement here. 30 achievements all in all in this game. Slicey nicey. So uh, step into the room. You can see a diver's helmet here on the right. So make sure to have a look at that one. 
open it up and take the random skull key just chilling inside. Uh, back out just the once to zoom in on the lever on the right, which is just above the chest. We're going to obviously need to interact with that because another random number bit is coming up. Back out once more, zoom in on the chest, and then use the skull key in the lock and open it up. Now, also make sure what you're going to grab is interact with the final spider web, which should get you the spider web achievement. So again, that should be six out of six all unlocked. Once you've done that, take the golden star disc and uh, back out twice. And then we'll just go down and back out until we are back outside of the lighthouse again. So once again, go to the left of the lighthouse, climb the ladder, and then we need to just uh, close the shutters, and we'll just interact with it once. That'll close the shutter. Uh, back out another three times to go back inside of the lighthouse, and again, these numbers are going to be completely randomly generated, completely different for you, so make sure to note the numbers that are displayed on the shutters to the right. For me, as you can see, 17, 6, 10, 1, and 12. Just note that 12 will always be on the bottom but it is the first four numbers which you are going to need to write down. So, uh, yep, once you've done that, we're going to back uh, completely keep backing out until we're back in the elevator and go back to floor zero. So once we be here again, we are going to go left and then we're going to take the right path again and we're going to zoom in on the orange tree twice. Now you can see a cheeky little stumpy bum right there, so uh, use the rope on the stump and then we're going to climb down. Now this is one of the grindiest, more annoying achievements that we're going to be, coming, uh, going to be happening, or two actually, but click on the peg a couple of times, that removes it. Now, this is, as I said, a start of another missable achievement. So just like Trevor the Mouse, you just need to keep on talking to this uh, Gunther the Annoyance. So just keep on talking until the dialogue once again starts repeating. So once you feel that's good enough and you're all good, we're going to back out until we're back in the elevator room to take the elevator to floor minus two. And then we're going to head forward to go to the beach once more. So from here then, we are going to take a right, and this time we're going to zoom in on the log a couple of times, so we can take the fishing net and the stone artifact. Ooh, delicious. So yep, the fishing net and the stone artifact. Now we're going to back out three times again and go to the boat. But we're not actually going to drive over just yet. Uh, we are going to attach the fishing net to the hook on the back of the boat. And then what you need to do then is go to the lighthouse and then back again. So A to drive over and then B to automatically drive back. And then what you're going to have is a fish. Now, you probably think it'd be easier to just have a net and go fishing yourself, but apparently not. So grab the fish. By the way, you can only grab one at a time, which makes it even more annoying. And then we'll... Uh, so once you've got the fish, back out until you're in the elevator to go back to minus floor one. Or floor minus one even. And to get another miserable achievement, you are going to interact with the cat flap. You're going to drag the fish to the door, and that'll get you the cat door, cat door courier achievement. There we go. So make sure you've done that. Right, go back into the elevator, and we're going to go to floor minus two this time again. And then we're going to basically go back to the boat. We're going to take it across and go back, and then we're going to grab the fish out of it again. It's going to be a lot of this grabbing fish stuff for a while. So 
So once you have grabbed the fish, what we're going to do is take the elevator and go to floor zero and head back into the vent where it splits from right to straight. And it's time for another achievement here. So we're going to go straight ahead once again. What we're going to do is toss the fish on the side of the walkway into the fan. So put it as close to the fan as you actually can. There we go. Pick up the, um, the fish bones and you'll get the sashimi buzz cut achievement again. Uh, plus we also need this for the very last, uh, effectively the last achievement in this first playthrough. So... Now, this is the grindy bit that's going to happen. So, we again have to go th straight through into the elevator to take it to floor minus two. And then we just need to go to the beach and then go left to the boat again. And then, once again, we are going to go to the lighthouse and then back. So, yes, this is the start of the grindy achievement. So, effectively... We have to make Gunther the bird hiccup. And the only way to do that is by feeding him four fish. So we're going to have to do this step four times. So once you've grabbed the fishy wishy, we are going to go to floor zero and go outside through the left door again. Then once we're on the outside, we're going to obviously take the right path and go down to Gunther. So again, click on the orange tree and then take the orange stump rope down. Come on, bruh. Okay, there we go. Finally get inside. I take the goddamn tree down. Okay, there we go. So I was talking to myself right there. Sorry. So take the tree down and then what you need to do is drag the fish to Gunther and then talk to him some more until the dialogue once again is exhausted and the, the same dialogue repeats. <coughs> then we need to back out all the way back to the elevator room Go to floor minus two. Obviously going back to the beach, go to the left, take the boat to the lighthouse and then drive back. And then obviously what you need to do then is just keep repeating what we just done. So when we get the fish, you're gonna go back to floor zero, go out through the left door, Go to the right and down to Gunther, drag the fish to him so he eats it, talk to him some more until more dialogue is exhausted. Then come back to the beach, elevator floor minus two, come back to the beach, grab the next fish, and then just keep continuing doing this until we get the bird buffet achievement and the gas bag with Gunther achievement for giving Gunther hiccups and completing all conversations with him. So yes, this may take just a few little minutes.
So to be fair, this has been a, a really enjoyable game so far, but achievements like this grindy one do personally ruin it for me anyway. Uh, but anyway, once you've done that, you should now get the two achievements for giving him the hiccups. And again, after he gets it, just keep talking to him and you should get the gas bag with Gunther achievement as well. So we are going to be coming up to another puzzle right now. So back out a couple of times and interact with the stone sculpture by the fork here in the paths. So we, uh, what you can see there, we need to place both stone artifacts on the top. Now, whatever numbers that you write down, so basically the way this works is uh, whatever numbers that you have written down. So say, for instance, you got 16, you just need to copy um, the symbol, which is basically on top. So you're going from top to bottom or whatever order it it is that you was so obviously for me it was um 17 so i'm obviously going to be putting in the uh, t with the dot symbol so you're effectively again say you're grabbing number seven from the middle you just need so it's the third row down and the third one across so that is the symbol that you need so hopefully that does make sense it should be easy so you literally just copy it from wherever the number is copy that symbol that is in the same um path as the number so once you've uh, done that part and the lighthouse bit is all done, it should be fine. Um, again, it's easy enough to sort of understand when you do the first two, but then we can go back and down to the elevator to go down to floor minus two. We're going to go down to the beach one more time. We need to go back to the lighthouse, come back and grab yet another fish. <gasps> Hooray! But it is time for an easier achievement this time. So uh, go ahead, grab the fish, and then just drag the fish to the water to get the catch and release achievement. That's all you got to do is just drag the fish to the water, and you'll get that achievement easily. Or apparently, what we need to do anyway is ride the boat across and back one last time. So, yeah. Because we do need another fish anyway. But make sure to release this one into the water. There we go. Catch and release. All done. Now we can go ahead and grab this fish. No, not... Ah, oh, what the hell am I doing? Sorry. Sorry. Kind of uh, kind of got a bit uh, stupid right there. <laughs> right, finally. Right, we're back to it now. Uh, stop going back to the lighthouse. 
Apologies. Why I done that four times, I will never, never know. Right, finally, we back out once, zoom into the vines, and on the left side, you can see there is a panel. Now, the stone artifact uh, puzzle, if you manage to do it correctly, that is what opens up, and we get the ornate gem inside. Again, if it is closed, just go back to the lighthouse and check your numbers, then go back to floor zero and outside the stone sculpture and do the whole checking your numbers to your symbols thing. Um, then we're just heading to the right side of the beach. We go into the gas barrels on the log. We're going to zoom in on the log and place the fish on the log. That will get Gunther's annoying squawker ass down. Then we can go back to the elevator and go back to floor zero. So back outside to the left. Uh, take the right path, head down to Gunther's nest, and then we will be up. Uh, we will finally actually be able to take the ornate gem that he was sitting on. So make sure that we grab that, and then we can back out to the elevator room and take it to floor minus one. Right, so this time we are going to click on the stone sculpture on the left hand side. We're going to use the crowbar on it and that will get us the next ornate gem. Bunch of whole gems floating about the place and everything. God damn. Right, uh, so what we're going to do now is back out twice and then go into the room on the right hand side. And then we're going to place the ornate gems in the floating box and then take the Mysteriousness of the keysnessness. Gem detected. Four. Gem detected. Three. Gem detected. Two. Gem detected. One. Gem detected. Unlock sequence complete. Right, okay. So now what we're going to do from here is go back to the elevator and then go to floor minus two. We're going to go to more uh, floor minus two and this time we're going to go straight and solve the puzzle in the floor. Now the puzzle which is needed straight on is the picture of the colored boxes that you should have had earlier on. So whether you wrote it down or you took the picture, just copy it from what you had, copy it in here. And uh, as I said, it's gonna be different each time. So just color in the same boxes that are colored in that box. And then we are good to blow, Mr. Mo. So simply step forward, place the mystery key into the, um, well, lock, I suppose, interact with it, and take the second golden star disc. Then we're going to back out twice, head down to the beach, and then go left. So finally, we can start getting somewhere. Coming to close to the end of the game now. So... Use the machete here on the vines, then we're going to place golden star discs, and then we're going to solve the puzzle. So again, you can either follow along with what I do, or if you just want to skip ahead a minute or two to find the final solution, so you can copy it from there, you're more than welcome to go ahead and do that.
Yeah, baby, yeah. Agent Austin Powers. Austin Agent Powers at your service, mate. Right, so that'll get us the Super Sleuth achievement, and we can find the Bolt Cutters off the ground. So make sure to grab the Bolt Cutters first, and then we need to back out three times, right across to the lighthouse, and then we need to go all the way to the very, very top. So we'll enter the room, we will zoom in on the cabinet on the left, use the bolt cutters on the chain, and then obviously open the doors, and then we need to take the blue small valve and the big old wrenchy boy. So then we need to go back down, go back across the old way, and go into the hidden waterfall door once we've got these two. So what we're going to do then, we'll zoom in on the control panel, which is just on the back of the submarine. Use the wrench in order to open said control panel. Use the small valve on the blue steam and then press and hold the A button until the needle is in the red zone. And then simply back out for another cutscene. Are you coming, Onyx? No? No Onyx for you, bad lady, bad lady. Right, what we'll do then is go straight across the rock, so what kind of looks like a half snap bridge, go around to the outside of the cave, and then it's gonna be another short uh, cutscene, and then after this we just need to find and uncover the jetpack, which is directly in front of us, again. Huh? This cannot be. So this should now give us the final blow achievement and then all we got to do is climb up the ladder. Now what you're going to do is have a bit of a cutscene here, a couple of cutscenes going on and then we need to give Onyx the fish bones to get uh, to give it the pa a parting gift achievement. So don't just continue on smashing through until we and that, uh, until we can obviously uh, re play as our character again. Positions to fill now. Thanks to you. What do you say? Care to join your old boss? <laughs> like, I don't, I don't know why evil villains laugh so much. Nothing's that funny. Anyway, once we are back, make sure to give the fish bones to Onyx. This will get us the parting gift achievement. And all we've got left to do now is the speed run. If you didn't get the speed run achievement now, that's what we got left. If you have done the speedrun achievement, then hey, congratulations and thanks for watching. See you in the next one. Big love! But again, if we go for playthrough two, then, well, you can simply just back out and we'll begin again. Now, obviously, now I've done this in a little under an hour and a half. So remember to get your notepad ready and your phone ready to take uh, pictures and everything, etc., etc., for all the random numbers and everything. 
Um, but again, obviously, I'm just going to be try. I'm just going to be speaking sort of as quickly as I can because we just want to get through this as quickly as we can. So, smash through it again. Smash through any cutscenes. So we're going to move, go to the front doors, move the potted plant, and take the golden key. We're going to unlock the keypad on the left. And make sure to click the buttons top right, or after using the gold key, then use the buttons top right, middle left, bottom left, and bottom right. Open up the doors and go inside. So now we can open the vase on the table and go ahead and push the red button. There we go, red button. And then pick up, of course, the crank handle from the top shelf. And again, with the buttons then, make sure to interact with the bottom buttons and then click the red and the blue buttons to turn them all off. Just keep alternating between the blue and the red. And then once we've done this, we can then head into the living room. So after this is done and the cutscenes ended, we're going to go up the stairs, knock over the lamp in the foreground. And then take the magnet from the shelf, which is behind the red book, on the second shelf up. So again, like I said, you can make some mistakes. Um, but obviously, let's try not to, huh? Right, so we're going to go back to the room with the fish tank. And then we're going to use the magnet on the fish tank to grab the metal key. So obviously just uh, click on the uh, fish tank thing here to grab it twice. You need to click on it. There we go. Aha, right. So once this is done, we're going to go up the set of stairs. There we go. So up the stairs we go. We're going to open up the drawer underneath the, mount, uh, the mounted yak's head just after we open the door with the key. So get inside, open the drawer under the mounted yak's head and take the yellow wedge piece. We're going to go into the bathroom now, which is obviously the door on the right. Turn on the sink. And then open up the mirror. So once you've turned on the sink, we should now be able to open up the mirror just above the sink and get the next yellow wedge piece. The, that next yellow season potato wedge. Right, flip the switch, which is behind the very left pinky bottle. And then take the telescope after a quick scene. I see you've found my safe room, Agent. Though you're still no closer to finding me. <laughs> Just go ahead and flip the switch again and get everything back. So we'll back out. We'll go to the left side room now, which is the study. Remember to set the clock in front of us to three o'clock. And then go ahead and take the diamond. So on the left side, remember to take the record off the shelf and place it on the gramophone. The Casey gramophone. Kelsey grammar. Um, then insert the crank handle and keep turning it until the needle is in the red. And it will poof out the screwdriver. Doing. There we go. So grab the screwdriver, back out of here, and then go upstairs through the bedroom. So go to the bedroom, then go upstairs. Um, move the cushion and take the yellow wedge piece from the egg chair. And then we can move the plant, which is on the table, and take the yellow cube. Now remember, we need to arrange the plant. So from left to right, 
you need to move the first one once, second one once, third one twice, and the right one once. And then we will place the telescope on the telescope-y telescope stand. And then uh, take the wedge piece, which is on the floor. Now we're going to head all the way back to the room with L Fish Tank Arena. And then we can place the yellow cube above the Sonar Fish Fish screen. There we go. So once we've got the yellow cube in, remember to arrange the cubes in this order. Red, white, orange, blue, yellow. So that's red, white, orange, blue, and yellow. Once that's done, make sure to grab, of course, the next wedge piece. Then we're going to go to the living room. So straight through to the living room. Double doors on the left. Uh, as you can tell, it obviously didn't work. But now we need to use the screwdriver on the box. Place the diamond in the laser beam and go outside to finish chapter one. Be careful, agent. You wouldn't want to fall in. <laughs> oh, you'd love me to fall in, you son of a... Anyway, quickly take the glass and then push over the table to grab the next wedge piece. We're going to fill the glass with water from the pool filter with where the blue drop is. Of course, don't be sticking your hand in the electric acoustic, the electricity. Uh, so <laughs> there we go. Remove the pool filter, grab the uh, water... So now we're going to go down the stairs behind the pool and take the letterbox key card off the plant on the right hand side. <laughs> and then once we've grabbed that, we're going to go to the left red pipe, twist the valve handle off the red pipe and obviously make sure to take it with you. And then from here, we'll back all the way out to the mailbox. Now interact with the mailbox and then use the letter B, uh, letterbox key card on the very top. And the symbols are the same as they were, obviously, so it should be the same for you. So it's the fast forward buttons, two arrows pointing to the right. The next will be two diamonds, looks like an eight. Third symbol will be two, three lines. And then the last one's going to be a circle with a line through it. Kind of like what everyone's haircut was in the early 2000s. Every rock person's anyway. Uh, <laughs> anyone who used to love rack. Take the wedge piece in the small key and then place the valve handle on the pipe on the right and then turn the water off. And then after this we need to go back to the pool area and then down the stairs again. So if you go towards the door what you're going to see is the red button that we need to press as well. Uh, now, I did get a little bit confused here for some reason for a few seconds, but there it is. So press the red button. And then, of course, we're going to take the wedge piece. And then we're going to actually head inside the utility room by pressing 2, 2, and 5. So 2, 2, 5. That'll get us going. Now, obviously, if you can remember from the last time then, I uh, we started off on the bottom central door. But for some reason, once again, I got slightly confused. So I actually started to... I took the cork from the top of the left plant, and then, um, yeah, again, got slightly confused for whatever reason, and then I took the cork from the bottom, from the middle door, then the right-hand side to take the oil can. So that should be two corks and an oil can, and obviously the plunger. Make sure you've got the plunger from behind the pitchfork. And then we can use the small key on the toolbox and take all four items. Again, you can open up the fuse minigame if you want. Um, but yeah, make sure to take all the items in here. Then back out twice, and then we can use the oil can on the grate in the floor. And then we can go ahead and grab the seasoned wedge piece. Right, so back out of here, and then we're going to use the corks on the left and center holes just below the Travy Fountains. So uh, go down, grab both corks, put them in the left and center, as I said. 
And then we can back out all the way to the mailbox and then turn the water back on. And then once the water is back on, we're going to use the key with the red tag in the red box lock just on the side of the mailbox. And then go ahead and grab the fuse from the loose panel here on the left. Uh, next, go back to the front doors. And remember, we need to use the hammer on the flashing light. So whether, whichever way you do it, make sure to use the hammer on the flashing light. Then pick up the strange pulsing item. And then we're going to use the neck, the light bulb we've got. We're going to use that in the light. That'll be good, all good. And then open the doors and go inside to the living room. So straight through, thank you very much. We're going to use the filled glass now on the fireplace to our right. And then we can pick up the tiles, the first tile we can grab. Uh, back out once and then move the picture just hanging above and solve this puzzle. Remember, this is an easy one. Uh, we will rotate the inner ring until the circle is on the left-hand side, then the outer ring, and then the middle ring. Now, also, what I should say for the speedrun, by the way, which I forgot to mention, is you can actually pause it and the timer stops, but make sure that you press the A button. If you want to continue on, press the A button. Not the B button. If you press the B button, you actually back out. And I'm not sure if it voids the achievement. So if you press start, press A to continue onwards. Uh, otherwise, just uh, crack on with this puzzle. And pretend that this glass is a speedrun achievement so you can smash the crap out of it. Like, I hate your speedrun achievements. Stop ruining games. There we go. Right, so back up, uh, back out. And then we're going to go upstairs to the bathroom. So the bathroom, which is on the right, of course. And then we're going to use the plunger on the sink and take the triangular key. There we go. We use the plunger on the sink, grab the triangular key, go back to the living room and then select the table. And remember, it hasn't changed. It's uh, top right to click on first. So top right, then top left, then bottom right, then bottom left. Now, these are the three sort of Simon Says chest pieces uh, that we got to do. So hopefully you can just easily follow along or just pause, pause the video and just wait until I finished. And yeah, go from there. <laughs> So here we go, Mr. Travy Gravy Fountain. That's the wedge piece that we're going to grab. Then we're going to go to the pool once again and head down the stairs. We're going to take the fish bones, which should be below the only working Travy Gravy. And then we're going to go back to the room with the fish tanks. Or with the fish tank, sorry. And then head upstairs to the bedroom. Wee wee wee. Oui, oui. So straight in front of us is the bedroom. We're going to give the fish bones to Onyx. Now, oh, come on. Give the fish bones to Onyx. And then obviously we're going to take the circular lens and we can go straight upstairs and place the circular lens straight in the telescope. Now, remember, this is the random lumber lighthouse. Like I said, you can pause the game and you can still see the 
the random number. So uh, that comes in very, very handy. So if you want to pause it now and write it down so you don't waste any valuable seconds, you're more than welcome to do that. Um, otherwise, get your random number off, go back to the living room and then head upstairs. We're going to... and um, Oops, sorry. We're going all the way to the living room, of course, and then upstairs, as I said. <laughs> now, get your... Move the middle couch cushion, place the strange pulsating item, and go ahead and grab the phone. There we go. So, grab the phone. Job done. Um... Now we need to go to the living room and type the number in the broken keypad. So remember, your lighthouse numbers were on the right. So whatever so whatever it is, um, it's the left numbers that you need to be putting in. So remember, your lighthouse numbers are on the right-hand side. So we've done that one. Once you have done this, again, just fast-forward. Again, pause your game if you want. Uh, fast-forward 30 seconds or so until you see the solution. So you can just copy it. Although I'm just realizing that a still probably would have, a still image would probably would have been better. But anyway, uh, it is what it is. We've all done now. So go outside. We're going behind the pool and back into the shed. We're going to do the fuse box puzzle now. The getting the electronic chip from one end to the other. Now, for some reason, it took me longer to do it this time when I had more confidence than it was the first time for whatever reason. But again, like I said, if you want, you can just get it to the end to see which, um, which sort of boxes I've moved about, and hopefully you can do it a little bit quicker. No idea why that confused me more, more this time around. But anyway, once you've done that, we can go back to the pool area and take the wedge piece out of the pool filter. So again, coming close to the end now of chapter two. So there we go. Take the wedge piece out and then we can go to the room with the fish tank and head upstairs to the bedroom once more. So up the, st up the wooden pairs, apple and pairs we go. Go to the bedroom. And now we need to go to the uh, wooden box here at the foot of the bed and place all the wedge pieces in it and grab the ruby. So 
So once that's grabbed, we can now back out. We can place the ruby in the yak's head's mouth, just in the hallway, and make sure to grab the rich piano roll from its mouth. Mm. Angry, angry yak. So go to the living room, and then we can head back up the stairs. And remember, this is the puzzle, again, that we've got to do with the piano. So grab the rich piano roll, pop it in. And remember, the, uh, if the keys are sort of obviously numbered 1 to 7, obviously from left to right, start with the mark key. It's 1, 2, and 4. And then for round 2, it's 1, 2, 4, 4, 6, 7. And then, of course, for round 3, it's going to be 1, 2. Well, let's just wait for a minute. So yeah, let's go. So 1, 2, 4, 4, 6, 7, 7. Six, five, two, and one. And then just go ahead, pull the lever that appears, and we can finally get the hacker device from the bottom shelf. The hacker. Hacker mushmaka. Right, go back to the living room, and we're going to use the fingerprint on the... Uh, uh, the hacker device on the fingerprint scanner. Remember to solve the puzzle, just press the A button as the white number appears in the white bar from left to right. So once that's done, we will then push the button. We're going to take the C4 explosive. We're going to interact with push the button, get a little scene. Give up now, and remember, we need to be writing down a, another number, which will be on the phone. So again, if you want to just save yourself, as I said, valuable seconds, uh, you can um, press the pause button, write down the number, and then the A button to continue. So again, it's going to be completely random for you. So pause. As you can see, you can still see everything. You can still see the number, which is great. I think it's only the lighthouse one we can't see later on, but that is fair, just fair. So once you've paused and you've written down your number, again, remember to press the A button to continue because the B button takes you back to the main menu and some people have said that it voids the achievement. So just be careful of that one. So go upstairs then. We're going to head all the way to the study, which is on the left. Call the number that you've got, and then we can just enter the opening at the bottom of the pool to finish chapter two. So then, on to Rubelicious's trap. So, straight away, zoom in on the case, push the yellow button. Remember, we need to solve the puzzle, so it's uh, moving the triangle left once and down twice. Moving the left diamond up once and left once. Move the right diamond left once. Move the circle right once, up once and right once. Move both of the diamonds to where the circle was. And then just move the circle into its shape, the triangle into its shape, and the square into its shape. And then open up the briefcase by clicking on both of those. Uh, both of the clasps, or whatever. So what we're going to do is take the pencil. Now obviously this is going to be a lot quicker. We don't have any mouse, uh, mice to talk to or anything like that. Uh, so we obviously don't have to be doing anything miscellaneous-y. So, go ahead, grab the pencil, open the right panel, <clears throat> excuse me, and flip them the switch them. Go ahead, flip the switch there, go to the left panel and take the glowing object and the electronic cushion cushion chip. Back in the right panel we need to go and place the electronic chip. And from here we can take the power cell back out and place that power cell.
God, I sound like the Durabell, uh, uh, Duracell bunny every time I'm bloody talking, every time I talk about a power cell. So, uh, do this puzzle once again. Remember, I probably should have done this with the still image earlier on, but uh, that's exactly what you've got to do. So the two biggies, etc. So make sure it's in that particular order. Once that is in that particular order, we can then open the front panel. And again, this is more puzzlings we have to do. So remember, it's top left. So top left, bottom right, middle left, middle right, top right, and bottom left. And again, we need to solve the puzzle. So again, just um, obviously, if you want to just pause your game, probably should have put a still in the corner. So apologies for that again. Um, otherwise, just click on um, fast forward by a few seconds and then pause your game and then obviously follow along. Right, so once we have done this then, what we can do is back out and go to the camera. Now remember, we need to write down the random generated symbols. So again, it's going to be completely different for you. So interact with the camera here in the top left corner. There it is. And remember, like I said, you can still pause the game. It'll stop the timer, but make sure to write these symbols down. Once they are all lovingly written down, what we can do is back out and go to the left side of the stand. So head to the left side and remove the metal handle from the fan. And then obviously we can take the glowing object and all 10 little, little plugs, obviously grabbing the ones on the floor as well. So backing out of here, we need to go onto the right hand side wall and place all the little plugs on the right wall. Um, now it's exactly the same as earlier, so it's kind of like the backwards seven again. Now interact with the right hand side mouse hole, we need to get Trevor over to the left hand side. Oh here's our little guy, no I'm not talking to my own ting, I'm talking to the mouse. So now go to the stand and use the lever in order to switch the room. Once this is done we can then go to the right hand side mouse hole and click on Trevor again to make him move. Make him make him moves, make him moves, make him moves baby. Come on, get, get out of it. Right, now we can go to the left-hand side mouse hole and get Trevor's key from Trevor. Old Trevor Mint. There we go, thank you very much. Don't care about talking to you, sorry Trev bags. So now we can use Trevor's key on the spot in the floor on the right-hand side, which will then mean that we need to do this circle moving puzzle again. And again, there will be a still image in the left-hand corner for you. Again, for some reason, I seem to get even more confused on that one. But once you have finally got that one, obviously pop the handle in and turn it until we can grab the power cell. The old Duracell bunny. Lasts for up to 12 teen hours, apparently. So there we go. Grab the power cell. And then what we can do is open the small panel on the lower right uh, by the safe. Using the switch at the bottom right of said safe. So... Let's back it out, hunky-dory. There we go. There, That's what we need then. 
So open up the small panel, of course, with the uh, little switch there to the left. Take the glowing piece and remember to push the yellow and black button and then push the triangle button to pop out a cheeky laser bar. So next up, we'll go to the left side of the room and we will open the bottom grated door by using the pencil in the slot and then of course sliding it down. And then we also need to take the chisel. So remember to change the uh, the chisel first and then change the piston colors from left to right. Remember it is red, light blue, light blue, green and dark blue. So that's red, light blue, green and dark blue. Now remember what you have to do with this uh, top uh, puzzle. Now obviously we need to get all the arrows pointing all the way to the right. So remember then just to freeze it. We'll just go with the top one first. Until the uh, second arrow. Until the second row is at the same as the first one. There we go. Uh, I actually just messed that one up. So I do apologize. But there we go. Um, <laughs> so then obviously with the third one you need to freeze it until the left two are at the same and then, of course, do the same with the last one, and then go down. And then, of course, once we've done this, the, uh, the random note, or the random note will appear with random symbols on it. So again, you can press the pause button, and write down your randomly generated numbers. So now we can back out of here. Now we're going to go to the stand and we're going to take the teensy little red key in the top right hand corner just next to the lever and then we can use said lever in order to switch the room again after this is done we can then head to the left go to the loose brick and use the chisel on the brick in order to uh, uh, uh i mean well chisel it out really does what it says on the tin really so take the glowing piece back out once and make sure to take the loose brick off the floor Bling. Go to the right side of the stand. And then we can place the loose brick on the bottom right button. And then once we have done this, we can then go to the left side of the stand. And then grab the glowing piece and push the black and yellow button and then the arrow button. Right, now we're going to go to the front of the stand and then we're going to use the tiny teensy weensy little red key right here. That will give us the last glowing piece. So then we can go back to the right side of the stand. And then obviously we need to place all the glowing pieces. Anybody lost any glass eyes? Well, I'm sorry, I'm using them to, you know, not to disarm a bomb, okay? Everyone's happy with that. Right, so there we go. Place all the glowing pieces. And again, remember, you need to note all of the symbols on the right-hand side. So again, zoom in, press pause, and write it all down. So once you've done that then, push the grey button of course in the middle and then push the yellow and black button and then the diamond button in order to get all three lasers up. And then after this one, go back to the front of the stand and pull the lever to change the room again. Now 
Now, remember this puzzle then? So obviously what you have to do. Now, what I actually ended up doing here was pausing it and putting all the numbers underneath each symbol. And basically that just made me... Uh, so instead of pausing it and then looking, I literally wrote every number under every symbol that I needed so I could just go straight into the safe and then smash all the numbers out quicker than an otter's plicker. So once again, once that is done, we're going to take the power cell and then we need to line up all of the lasers. So back out as much as you can. So back out another couple of times. So we're going to zoom in on the laser in the left back, first of all, and then make sure to put the black dot to, so that it is facing to the very right. So the uh, circles on the right there. Now with the laser in the front of the left one, rotate it so the dot is pointing downwards. And then finally, with the laser on the right, move it so the circle is on the right-hand side once more. <laughs> then go ahead, uh, take the take and place the power cell. So we need to take the last power power cell, go up to the top of the stand. Place all of the power cells in, push the big kill switch, big red button, and destroy the case with everything in it to just to end at chapter three. So I'm not sure how you're thinking, whether you think, ooh, two chapters left, or, oh god, still two chapters left. But anyway, let's crack on. So the middle box, get rid of all the shoes, take the cabinet key, and then open the box on the right so we can move the paper, and take the blueprint piece. So use the cabinet key on the cabinet above. Eventually, they're coming. Yep, so use the cabinet key there on the cabinet above and then take the screwdriver from the right hand side. We obviously don't have to worry about any spider webs. Uh, remove the vent on the left with the screwdriver and then just go straight into the vent and go to the right. So go to the right once, go to the right twice after the cutscene and then obviously smash your way through. Once we are in this room, we're going to take the cheesy baguette off the table. And then while we're here as well, we can go ahead and press the red button, which is hidden in the left plant by the door. So go ahead, we'll just chuck that one on. And then once we have done that, we can then just pull the lever in order to change the room. And then we can take the blueprint piece from under the yellow monitor with, with the number one on it. So go ahead, take the blueprint piece here, head all the way back to the blueprint room and put the blueprint pieces on and make sure of course you note your level one clearance number because again it's going to be all randomized so once it's locked load loaded and written down go to the left we need to go to the mouse hole in the bottom left Give treasure a treasure. God damn it! Give Trevor the cheesy baguette, and he'll grab us the small key. Uh, back out once, and then we can break the wall above again, or back out twice even, and break the wall above. Smashy, do smashy, do smash. Hulk smash. Reagan sleepy. Uh, go ahead, use the small key in the toolbox lock to grab the hacking software. So go back through the vent to the computer room now. And then we can go ahead, go to the number one, 
uh, yellow screen, insert the hacking software, input your clearance number, and then remember to take the hacking software as well. So remember to take the hacking software. Once you have done, what we can do is now go forward through the door by the plant to the uh, quote unquote elevator room. So zoom in on the bricks, of course, on the left wall, and then you have to do them in a particular order. So remember it's top right, then middle right, then top left, bottom left, and then bottom right. So now we can just go through the left door to go to the outside, take the right path, and then click on the orange tree twice in order to get the blueprint piece. Then after this, what we're going to do is back out and then go straight up the mountain. So straight up. Ah! So uh, <laughs> once we're up here, go to the right, zoom in on the red box on the fence. And then we need to take the blueprint piece, which is off the top of said red box. Once you've grabbed this blueprint piece, back, back out all the way to the blueprint room. Again! So again, you obviously need to do the same thing here then. So put your blueprint down. Again, you can pause the game and then just write down your specific clearance number. So after this is done, we can head all the way to the elevator room, go left, and then go straight back to the top of the mountain. So my lovers, when we get here, we're gonna to go to the left towards the wooden shack, open up the left side, Insert the hacking software, enter your level 2 clearance number, and take the hacking software back. Right, so now we're going to back out until we are back in the elevator room. So just a couple of times here. So now we can go into the room on the right. And we will take the TV remote off the table first of all. Which should be straight in front of us there. So take the TV remote again off the table. Back out once and then take the wrench off of the floor. And then once you've grabbed that, interact with the jetpack a few times and press the red button to send it fly bagging. <laughs> Once that's smashed, crashed, and dashed, make sure to take the bucket from the now busted open cabinet, or the mega open cabinet, head back to the elevator, use the button on the left to open the doors, and then go to minus floor one. So head to the left into the cat flap, get the blueprint piece from inside, and then we can head back to the elevator to go to floor zero. So back up to floor zero, and then what you need to do is back out to the computer room and use the tube in the middle of the room. So back out once here, and then we can back out again, go through to the L-tubeness. So again, we are going to take the blueprint piece from Onyx. So click on him, and then grab that, go upstairs. Take the blue next blueprint piece off the floor, and then go into the bathroom again on the right. Uh, turn on the shower, a nice lovely little posh shower, I would really enjoy that to be fair. Uh, but anyway, fill the bucket with water, back out and go to the study on the left. Go straight in front of you with the switch and make sure to get the club's key and the blueprint piece, and then go ahead and flip the switch. 
And then from here, we can just back out and go into the bedroom. Ruby's bedroom. Wah, wah, wah. Wee, wee, wee. Uh, so, yeah, uh, sorry. Go straight into the bedroom and take the blueprint piece next to Onyx, who is on the bed. And then we can just back out all the way to the sharky fish tank top tube and go back down to the computer room. So now we can back out all the way to the blueprint room, place all the blueprint pieces and note your, again, pause the game and note down, write down, sorry, your level three clearance number. So from here then, we will now um, go back up to the fish tank tube top and back up to the study. And then of course, with the number three uh, computer, Enter your clearance number and remember to take the hacking software again. And then once again, to do some more back and forth, we're going to go to back down to the fish tank tube. So straight back down. And then what we'll do here, we'll go into the elevator to go back to floor minus one. So go straight in front of us. And again, straight into the elevator. Go down to floor minus one. And then what we need to do is partially open the door on the right hand side and take the blueprint piece off the floor. So now we can open up this one. Flashy, flashy. Flash of the splash of the gash and the mash and the nash. So take the blueprint piece there just underneath the door, go back into the elevator and go back to floor zero. Now we need to go back out into the vent where it splits in half and then move forward again past the speedy web. Now we can obviously use our level three cle clearance on this boy, which will get the path going, the walkway or whatever. Then again, just rotate the wheel until the arrow is pointing up. And then when we can, just move back and we're going to go back to the elevator room. And then just go ahead and take the left door outside, which we can find the... Next blueprint piece on the left side by the fan, of course. So once you have grabbed this, we can move straight up to the top of the mountain again. Go to the right side on the red box and set off the jetpack's hormones again. Tickle its red spot until it gets peaked. Right, now we can go ahead and use the wrench in order to open up the red box. Use the filled bucket on the electricity. And then we can open up the gate and climb the ladder just one time. Just one time. So open the box on the right and take the gas hope, uh, the gas hose, sorry, and the swipe card. And then back all the way out to the blueprint room once again. And then, of course, do the same as you've always done. Put the blueprint pieces on and then pause the game and write down your level four clearance number. Oh, clearance.
So once we get into the elevator room once again, what we're going to do is go back outside to the left. We're going to take the right path this time and open up the grey box straight in front of us after the cutscene. So yeah, there we go. Open up the grey box and obviously pop in your clearance number and make sure to take the hacking uh, CD-ROM back, the hacking software back. And then we're going to head back a couple of times in order to go back to the elevator. And then we're going to go to floor minus one. Then what we'll do is open up the gold door straight ahead. Kind of get into the end of it now, sort of. Uh, but open up the gold door straight ahead. And then we need to press the red button, which is inside the small rock on the right. So we'll just pop this one out first. Obviously, before going up the steps, we need to go left across the bridge. Use the fireplace tools once we eventually get there. Uh, so yeah, use the fireplace tools and then open up the box and take the diamonds key and the lighter. So now we can back out just to the rocks, still in the same room, but we're going to go up the desk. We're going to click all three buttons on the desk. And remember, the password is Onyx, O-N-Y-X. And simply just keep reading through the top emails until, uh, and just keep pressing continue until we can no more. So just backing out a couple of times here, we're going to go down to floor zero or up to floor zero even. Uh, back out once and then pull the lever again on the left to switch the room. Now remember, this is another spy boy number, which obviously flashes up on screen quite quickly. So use the TV remote on the TV and note the spy boy number. So last time it was 1919. Now for me, it's 6642. So once you've noticed that one or you've written it down or... Uh, took a picture of it or whatever we can then back out and head back into the elevator room so there we go all done so back out now go to the elevator room and then enter the door on the right go to the cabinet once again in the back and obviously unlatch and open the cabinet doors and then you need to back out, use the gas hose on the red gas hose on the red hose, and then use the lighter to light the flame in order to get the lab key. So back in it once more again. So go back into the elevator. Go back down to floor minus one. And then we're just going to head straight through the golden door again and up the stairs to the desk. So remember, we can use the lab key now on the drawer. So onto the drawer lock. So make sure to do that. And take the tape and remember to... Um, Pause and uh, write down the account number here on the piece of paper. Once you have written down the account number and taken the tape, go back to the elevator and go to floor zero again. So what we need to do from here then is back out, switch the room back using the lever on the left here. 
And then we need to take the fish tank tube up. The fish tubing tank and topping. And then we need to head upstairs into the study. So from here, we're going to go straight upstairs. Go to the study on the left. Use the phone call to buy Spy Boy. Again, using the number that you've got from the TV. And then press option three for the portable hard drive. Welcome to Spy Boy for all your spy gadget needs. Press 1 to order. To place an order, please enter your account number. Congratulations! Your item will be there in a jiffy. Thank you for shopping with Spy Boy. And then, of course, back all the way out to the mailbox. Open, the, uh, open up the package and get the portable hard drive. Then you can go back inside the house and take the fish tank tube back down. So, almost done, finally, we are going to use the portable download the stuff, download the goodies off the computer. Once this one is done, we can obviously go ahead and collect it. Back out once again and take the elevator to floor zero. Broadcast warning to Agent B. Agent Bishonentidon. Yes, that's Swedish for something or other. Anyway, leave through the door on the left, go back up to the mountain, go to the right and climb up the ladder twice. So here we go. We Again, we're coming up now. We're almost to the end of this chapter. So climb up the ladder twice and then interact with the bottom cable and then click the cable again in order to attach them. Once you've done that, then we can continue climbing up Two more times, use the tape on the antenna, climb down, all the way down, go over to the wooden shack on the left, and we're getting there, come on man, don't you need, don't you know we got an achievement to get, so, wooden shack, use the portable, uh, use the swipe card to open the panel on the right, Use the portable hard drive and click send when it appears and then back out until a cutscene starts and the final chapter begins. Agent Lou. Right, come on then, lads and gals, let's do this. Right, pick up the blueprint piece and the spring, and we're gonna head all the way back to the blueprint room. Place your blueprint pieces on and pause and note your level five clearance number. Thank you. 
Right, so once this is done, we can now go back to the elevator room, and then this time we're going to go through the door on the right. So first things first in this room then, what we're going to do is click the flashing number four panel. And then obviously we need to insert the hacking software, enter our clearance number, and then we're good to golden nuggets. Quickly, 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 they rent a little mouse. Right, no, we're going back to the elevator. So to the elevator, go to floor minus one. They rent a little house up the mouse's house. Right, use the spring on the broken door panel on the right. Go into the room and remember for this next puzzle, you need to press every single button except for white, yellow, and green. So remember, press every button except for white, yellow, and green. Welcome back, Agent LaRouge. Initiating anti-gravity device. Please wait. So, go ahead and take the hearts key floating on the left. And then we can back out a couple of times and take the elevator to floor minus two. So remember these two puzzles here that we got to do. Um, now, obviously, the one on the floor, remember, we start with the inside piece. Move to the outside piece and then go back to the middle piece. So here we go, inside piece, just move it around. Then the outside piece. There we go. And then the middle piece, that'll do. Now remember, this is the, the big door is the same. So fill in the dots with this following order using the... Um, so it's the last one first, so when you press the button, obviously... You, it's the last one, then the fifth one, then next to last, then seventh, and then ninth. Yes, mate! Right, straight through, pull the one that is shorting out, or the one, uh, the third lampshade or whatever. Onto the left, grab the ornate gem and the ammo. Uh, go to the right side and remember to take the crowbar and the spades key. So make sure you've got all those four items. Back out of here and then go down the stairs into the floor to the beach. So, first things first, go left and let get the black fuel hose here from the waterfall. So very important to grab that one. Back out again and go right towards the gas barrels where we can take the gas can and then use the fuse hole on the barrel and then use the gas can in order to get a filled gas can. Once that's been filled with the tears of Lewis Hamilton fans from Abu Dhabi 2021. Oh, oh let's not go there. Um, we will go to the left here to the boat. <laughs> I'm sorry. Remove the fuel tank lid, use the filled gas can and take the boat across. So now we need to go to the left of the big rock. And remember to take the partially hidden, slightly hidden stone artifact. Back out, go forward to the, uh, to the lighthouse and then go left around to the lighthouse. And then we need to open up the wooden box, look inside and take the antique key. Go back and use the antique key to unlock the lighthouse door and go inside. Now remember a couple of things that we have to grab here. So first of all, it's going to be the shovel on the right hand side. So make sure to grab the shovel and then back out and take the battery out of the battery compartment on the left. Now we can just go back all the way to the other side of the beach and then go right towards the gas barrels again.
So what we're going to do, zoom in on it once, make sure to use the shovel then in the center of the three rocks. Then we can go through the sand to take the rusty box from the hole. Okay, get in the hole. Oh, it was a fair speech. Uh, sorry, another Simpsons quote, of course. Uh, back to the elevator then. Go to floor zero. And then remember, you need to click on the table and place all four of the suit keys in its particular properly place. After you do this, you can then take the ornate gem and then remember to either write down the colored boxes for the next random puzzle or take a picture of it. Now, I did manage to pause it and take a picture of it. it I just about seen it. <laughs> but either way, whatever you do, so you can either just quickly snap a picture now or do what I do, pause it and then take a picture, whatever it is that you want to do. But make sure you've got it written down. But once we have done this, then we can back out and then we can go into the room on the right. We're going to place the battery on the charger just by the gun here. And then obviously while this is charging, we can use the Amunition on the Gunion. So use the ammo on the gun, interact with the trigger to splash bang the watermelon did. And then of course we will place the rusty box where the watermelon was to interact with the trigger again. And then take the machete. Once you've grabbed the machete, you can then take the battery off its charger. So, there's only one way to go now. We're backing out, taking the elevator to floor minus two, going to the beach, going across the water to the lighthouse, and putting the battery back in the container by the lift. Right, so once this is done, up we go again, only halfway, just past the first beam here. Open the box on the left and take the rope. And then we can finally continue up and enter the room. Up and up and away we go, it's a hard day for an achievement, foo. Uh, so, um, <laughs> wow, what a rhyme. So, straight through, interact with the diver's helmet here on the right, take the skull key and then use the skull key on the chest. Straight in front of us, open it up and of course look inside the chest to take the golden star disc. Now if Ruby didn't want to catch her, she could have just taken these keys with her. Yeah, weird bro. Uh, make sure to interact with the lever on the right. And then go back down the lift and exit the lighthouse and then go around the left side of the lighthouse again. Obviously here we need to climb up, we need to close the shutter. Now when we go back inside the lighthouse, I tried pausing and writing the numbers down, but I actually couldn't see them, so you'll just have to be quick and write these ones down here. Quick, 17-3, as you can see, can't see a flipping thing. So we go, quick, 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 17-3-8-1, okay, let's go, 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 go! Uh, so once we have done that, we will then back all the way out until we get to the other side, and to the elevator. From here, we're going to choose floor zero. So floor zero, go through the left door outside, take the right path. We're going to place the rope on the stumpy tree by the old orange tree. And then what, of course, we will do, we will climb down the rope. We're going to click on, click on the peg a couple of times to remove it. And then we're going to go back to the elevator and go to floor minus two. So once we've done here, we're going to go back down to the beach. We're going to go to the right. We will take the next fishing net and the stone artifact. 
So one stone artifact and one fishing net. Back out and go to the left. Oh yeah. Go to the left, attach the fishing net to the to the back of the boat, of course, and then right across the water and then back again in order to grab another fish. So once you've collected the one pound fish, one pound fish, go to the right once again towards the gas barrels, place the fish on the log. And once Gunther is down, we can then go back to the elevator, go to floor zero, head left outside and take the right path and then go down the rope to Gunther's nest. Thank God we don't have to do that grindy ass fish crap this time. So once we've grabbed the ornate gen, we're going to back out again to where the path splits, interact with the stone monument, place the stone artifact, and remember this puzzle once again. So remember, like I said, whatever number you've got, say you've got, as you can see for me, number 17, which is on the right-hand side, three, um, the third row down, you need to copy that symbol, which, uh, so obviously the numbers equate to the symbols, that's all you got to do. Uh, now, why I paused it, I actually writ down the numbers and then the symbols to go along with them so i can just uh, i could have just blasted it straight through rather than pausing it and then looking so that's what i done there i ripped my numbers down ripped the symbols whichever symbols needed to go underneath it or equated to it and then i just smashed straight through it And apparently I paused it for quite a while as well. But once we have finally done this one then, and you are confident that that is all correct, we can now back out to the elevator again. Go down to minus two, floor minus two. Obviously head straight downstairs to the beach again. Head left towards the vine. Look in the panel on the left and hopefully that should be open for you. So you can just go ahead and take the ornate gem again. Back out to the elevator once more and go to floor minus one. Have a look, of course, at the statue on the left-hand side. Make sure to use the crowbar on it. And, of course, that's going to be the ornate gem. So that'll be the final ornate uh, gem. Then we can back out and go into the room on the right-hand side. Go ahead, place all the ornate gems in the floating box and then take the mystery key. Gem detected. Four remaining. Gem detected. Three. Gem detected. Gem detected. Gem detected. Unlock sequence complete. Then we can go ahead, back out, go back to the elevator. And then we're going to go to floor minus two and then we can go straight into the vault room. So we're going straight in. Now remember, this is the uh, colored box. Again, it's going to be random every time. So take a look at your phone quickly. Again, you can pause it while you uh, just take a cheeky little look. And then, of course, just go ahead and put it the same as whatever it is that, uh, that it was for ye. And by the way, not Yi as in Kan Yi. No, uh, Kan Ye West uh, still loves fish dicks. Because Kan Ye is a gay fish, gay fish. Mother flipping gay fish. Anyway, use the key on it and grab the Golden Star disc, sorry. Uh, then we can back out a couple of times, go back downstairs to the beach. Go to the left and use the machete on the vines. 
and then place the golden stars, uh, the two golden stars disc in after this bit and then solve the puzzle. Again, what I'm thinking is I should have put the still image in, so I do apologize. But again, if you just want to pause, if you just want to pause the game and look at the end product, then you can just quickly copy what I've done. Get in there now. Get in there. Finally almost there. Right. Go inside the waterfall door here. Take the bolt cutters off the ground to the left. Now we need to back out and use the boat to go across to the lighthouse once more. Enter the lighthouse and then go all the way to the top. Go in, use the bolt cutters on the cabinet on the left. Then take the small valve and the wrench. Go back down to the boat and across once more and then enter the secret waterfall door again. And just a couple of things left to do, finally. Use the wrench to open up the control panel near the back of the submarine here. Use the small valve on the um, Stemmeroni. Turn the small valve until the needle's in the red. Back out until the cutscene starts. You coming on it now we can go straight across the uh, rocks then to the right exit in the cave we're gonna uncover activate the jetpack and then when we climb up the ladder you should hopefully have done this in less than two hours 120 minutes again it took me just underneath an hour and a half to do this so there is plenty of wiggle room for mistakes etc uh, but once you've climbed the ladder the final achievement, Speedy Spy, should be spores. Spoy boy.
Very clever, Agent A. Very clever. And there she blows me it is. So that is the final achievement, and that was Agent A Puzzle in Disguise. So I hope you enjoyed the game, and that, that the guide helped as well. If it did, of course, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And share with a friend, of course, as well. Big shout out to all my Patreon supporters and YouTube members, and anyone who interacts with me on the daily as well. And everyone for who leaves comments, so thank you so, so much again. And, well, I guess I'll see you in the next one, guys and gals. Big love, and spy boy. Spy bye everyone.